Good evening and welcome to the third round of the eSport Designs Cayman Super Cup in association with MSL Motorsport Consultancy. From the sunny coast of Italy to the dense green landscape of the Ardennes Forest, we go racing tonight at the legendary Spa Francorchamps in Belgium for our second pit stop race of the season. Last time out, the drivers made mayhem and Mizano in the race that had us gripped for the full 60-minute sprint. However, the action was further down the order as at the top of the pile, Luca Burke once again went unchallenged. The Zancho Simsport driver back to his best with a dominant pole and victory run, more than making up for his disconnection in the opening round at Barcelona. The reigning champion is definitely back in contention. Tonight, pit strategy will once again play a crucial part in the race result as drivers will battle for 90 minutes in what is the series' first visit to the iconic seven-kilometre circuit that is steeped in motorsport history. I'm Tim Fulbrook, one half of your Cayman commentary team, and I'm delighted to welcome my friend and Cayman-related comrade David Russell. Now, DW, first things first, I must congratulate you on a little victory of your own. Class winner at the AOR 8 Hours of Cheshire, hosted at Alton Park. As part of the eSport Designs team with Florian Bauer and Tom Raya, congratulations. How was your race? Oh, thank you, Tim. Yeah, good evening, mate. Good evening to everyone watching the stream as well. Uh, there was a lot of C's in that there, Tim. I was quite impressed with your alliteration, I've got to say. <laughs> I've got um, my teeth in. I've got my teeth in tonight, though. <laughs> it's good to know you're on top form already, which is always what we want to hear. Yeah, very, very pleased with our win at the weekend. And like you say, nice to take a win in the first official outing for ESD Motorsports. I know that Steve is very happy to see us top in the podium in uh, both class and overall. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm still a little bit flagging. I've not done an eight-hour race before, so all good fun. Brilliant stuff. Well, let's have a look at the championship standings then from this particular Cayman series. It's Ross McGregor that leads the way after back-to-back -back fourth place finishes. The Zancho Simsport driver proving that consistency really is key in the series. He leads the way by a margin of two points over BD Racing's Kev Critchley, who was forced to recover from well down the order to ninth place, an opening lap incident with Jack McIntyre at Mazzano. But his race winning performance at Barcelona proves he still has plenty to offer over these pit stop races. Jensen Button made his return to the podium with a third place finish that he stripped from McGregor on the final lap of the race. And the 2009 F1 World Champion is looking to claw back the points difference to his teammate, Luca Burke. Jack Noller is in third in the standings after a sixth place finish that he was over the moon with. And with more confidence at a circuit like Spa, he's definitely going to be a driver to watch across tonight's race but David as we love already the championship battle is very close at the top and every race counts absolutely Tim yeah and unfortunately no Kev Critchley this evening it seems for uh for BD Motorsports a bit of a shame that he's not going to be able to be competing tonight nor is Jensen Button obviously he just came back from Barcelona back to LA so I can uh can certainly understand his excuse which is certainly fair enough but uh I mean all of the top all of the other top crew are uh, ready and wearing to go and uh it's gonna it's gonna be a really good one tonight. Like I say, it's it's not only a a very challenging track, but yeah, I've got the pit stop as well, and I think we're gonna head to a hot lap now. So let's take a ride then around the roller coaster that is Spa Francorchamps, seven point zero zero four kilometers with some of the best asphalt in the world. On the run down towards the hairpin at the source, one of the best overtaking opportunities of the lap. Drop the anchor and shift down to second gear. Make sure you get a good exit here because if your car's set up right, you could be flat all the way from here through Eau Rouge, Radion, and on the run up towards Lake Cole. Move over to the right-hand side, get as close to the old pit wall as you possibly dare, and then throw the car in through Eau Rouge and climb up over the crest at Radion. And Jack Noller here in the MSL Motorsport Consultancy 36 came and running all the way over the curve at the top of the hill there, and then keep your pedal flat to the floor and up the gearbox for what is surely the best overtaking opportunity on the track up towards Lacom. Drop the anchor down from sixth gear and terminal velocity down to third. Use the kerb on the right and a huge kick of oversteer for Nola there as he gets the car back over to the left to throw the car to the right and make sure he gets out there nice and cleanly and uses all the track he possibly can. Then over the crest, downhill braking into the hairpin at Bruxelles or Rivage. And this is really where the track starts to head back downhill in towards the valley turn over to the right hand and through the left into a corner that doesn't really have a name but some people call it speakers so i'm going to call it speakers this evening all the curb then on the exit and down towards Pujon, another corner where you need the car to be as stable as possible double left hand are very fast indeed fourth gear you want to spend as little time on the brake and as much time on the throttle through there 
bring the car over to the left hand side for the piff path or fania a right left where once again you need a car that's capable of changing direction with medium speed using the shorter curves over the left hand side and then running all the way over the flatter curb on the right then it's the right hand here at campus and look at nola just drifting all the way through their track limits on the exit as well a point of contention tonight and then through the curb pull for air again running out over the left hand side and then find yourself going up through the gearbox again and waiting to commit to what must be one of the most difficult corners in the world Blanchemont where if the car washes out you can lose your track time indeed as, as we see Nola turning in one in <laughs> turn in there and David we've seen it so many times Blanchemont is a corner where the actions kicks off down here into the bus stop another action point an overtaking opportunity but plenty of drama at this tricky chicane to end the lap oh absolutely tim and i couldn't have put that better myself as a fantastic fantastic uh, bit of commentary we're actually gonna jump straight into qualifying and he head on with jack novice and obviously he's getting on as well but yeah it's one of those it's one of those tracks where it just rewards so much commitment doesn't it this if you can get it if you can be on the edge and put the hammer down and really give it your all and uh, and try and avoid some of those pesky track limits you see going through uh Thierry Rouge's Jack's just gone through there. You've got coming out of Malmody at the top of the top of the hill, just around here. You've also got Poo on. There's so many areas where just dipping the dip, dipping the tyres onto the wrong side of those uh, onto the wrong side of the lines is really going to ruin the lap. But yeah, one of those tracks is just an absolute classic, isn't it? No time to wait then as we head straight into qualifying. We're three and a half minutes into a 20-minute session, so drivers are on there first lap times and we've seen how important qualifying can be margins of less than two tenths of a second separating the uh, the pole and the second place last time out at Mizano. Nola here looking like he's on a clean lap at the moment heading down the hill through speakers could be very close in qualifying but David at a circuit like Spa qualifying might not be all important there's plenty of opportunities to overtake and with a 90 minute race you can certainly make back positions with some uh, pit lane uh, pit lane intelligence I'm, I'm sure absolutely yeah and pit lane intelligence as you've quite rightly coined it is going to be one of those things that's going to be really really important tonight because as those of you who know the uh, the pit lane that is used in a set of course of competition at spa is absolutely enormous it starts <laughs> at the bus stop chicane and goes all the way down the down the uh, down the F1 start finish straight round the source down the hill towards Eau Rouge back up there and then you end up just before the start of the Kemmel straight so it is one of those where you've got to time it absolutely perfectly because you can just lose so much time and it, it should mean that these guys are going to have to be very very cautious of of things like track limits because the drive through you're going to lose about a minute and without even having to stop the car so yeah, its strategies are going to be really important tonight. And I think, uh, although we've got loads of overtaking spots here as far as one of those classic tracks that, that breeds overtaking on a number of different occasions, I think we're going to see a lot of battles won and lost in the pit stop phase as well. Well, we did get to see how Luke Burke judged strategy. Uh, he was unable to take part in the opening round at Barcelona. This is only our second uh, pit stop race. Here's a new driver to the championship, Tom Ryer in the MSL Motorsport number no. two car. He's joining the series in replacement of James Merrills and looking like he wants to get on with it and start impressing because Tom, we know he's a quick driver, dominant in GT4 machinery, racing against uh, eSport Designs driver Florian Bauer in the Ravenel GT Challenge. Four wins in four races so far this season. He's very quick driver indeed, David. Oh, he's absolutely rapid as Tom, and he, he knows what he's doing as well. He's, uh, like I say, teamed up with him in the uh, in the AOR 8 hours of Cheshire on the weekend, and he did the first stint for us, and he had about a minute nearly in hand at the first pit stop. He was absolutely crazy just how quick that guy was, and uh, I, I'm I'm fairly fairly optimistic that he's going to have a really good run out tonight, and I think my MSL Motorsports have had, a, have, had, have had their lucky stars getting someone like him into the team. I think he'd do a really good job for them. A good pairing with Jack Noller, who we've been impressed by since his appearance halfway through season one. Driver on screen at the moment, Ross McGregor leads the championship, but is currently second on the grid behind Al Buncombe provisionally, who sets the pace at the moment in the number 23 Rocket Esports car, a 2 minute 28.962 at the top of the pile. McGregor second, best part of two and a half tenths back with a 29.2 as we're seeing the drivers completing their first laps. And with such a long lap here, David, there's not too much time to head back to pit lane and take another set of tyres, which we know are limited 
in the eSport Designs Cayman Super Cup. So really, you've got to be out on track setting lap times. Well, just lost David momentarily. That's fine. I'm sure we'll get him back. But yes, Al Buncombe at the moment leading the uh, leading the standings, uh, or leading the timesheets at the moment. We can see uh, Tom Rye is wasting no time in proving his pace up to third place at the moment. Danny Greaser in the number nine Haupt Racing Team came and is fourth place, nearly seven tenths back on Buncombe's time as a number of drivers still complete their first laps. And Ross McGregor jumps to the top of the pile at 2.28.8, sees him knock Bunkham off pole position. And David, I think we've got you back now. It's just making the point that 20 minute qualifying session sounds like plenty of time. You don't want to be spending any time in pit lane with such a long lap. And we're hearing Luca Burke is a second up at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to put him quite clearly on pole as it stands. And yeah, it's one of those, I think if it was me in the car for this session, I would most likely be uh, be fueling for what we're talking about five laps probably six seven laps of fuel in the car and i would just go flat out for the entire duration i really don't think there's going to be huge benefit from those getting in the pits and uh, and refueling because like you say if you get that one lap wrong and you've come out and you're on your out lap and that sort of stuff and then you invalidate it early doors then you've just lost the lap entirely but luca burke seems to have kept it fairly clean through the last couple of corners through the bus stop chicane it's going to absolutely smash the time it's surely going to be pole it is 22 228.5 goes three tenths quicker than sister teammate Ross McGregor in uh, in second place, and that team was a belter of a lap. Well, as it stands, if this uh, pole time remains unchallenged, and indeed no one betters Ross McGregor time, or indeed Ross McGregor doesn't improve, this will be the largest pole margin ever in the eSport Design Cayman Super Cup. <laughs> it's crazy to say that three and a half tenths or just over is the largest pole margin we've had a really stellar time from reigning champion Luca Burke a two minute 28.5 puts him on pole position as it stands as we near the halfway point of this qualifying session it's Ross McGregor and Al Buncan second and third Bastian Zenefels at the moment is fourth place on the grid uh, which seems to be much much more where Bastian deserves to be. His best qualifying coming at the opening round in the DP inaugural race of the championship back in Imola season one. He qualified second place. So nice to see Bastian in the podium sim racing car towards the sharp end. He hasn't been able to find that qualifying pace in the very first race. It seems like a long time ago, but up in fourth place at the moment and improving. Let's see if he can indeed jump ahead of Bunk and McGregor let's see if anyone can get close to Luca Burke's time but looking down the order David we're seeing drivers well I'll tell you what I'm looking at I'm looking at Jack McIntyre who's a second back on Burke okay yes this is qualifying but a pace difference like that for the number 37 Sancho Simsport driver in seventh it's not looking too good for his race pace. No, absolutely. And of course, had a bit of a horror show last week at Mazzano, um, obviously causing that first lap issue, our uh, first lap incident, should we call it, between himself and uh, and Kev Critchley shifted them both both quite way down the field. Of course, Kev managed to form a, a fairly decent recovery drive in the end, whereas Jack didn't even get in, re get, didn't even make a sniff of the points, which is a bit of a shame. So, uh, yeah, he's going to want to try and get himself back up there. And uh, yeah, being a second or so off the pace at the moment, you see him actually off the track completely. Trying to figure out where that is. He's just gone back to pit lane to uh, to get refueled and back out for another final couple of laps. But yeah, it's not really the uh, the idea you want to have coming into this qualifying session. Yes, it's a long track, and of course there's plenty of time to be won and lost. But at the same time, second off, even even in a lap of this length, is uh, is quite a big, but quick, quite a big margin. Well, Stone Passport here in the Triple Four Simsport Racing car. He took his first points finish previous race at Mizano and he'll be looking to better his best qualifying which was 19th which came at the previous round currently in 20th and improving and he jumps up to 19th knocks Daryl Upton back down the order but there's plenty of time still to be found for Passpont who's 1.9 seconds off pole and he's tied for times to the thousandth with Jack Noller who's currently in 18th position at 230.40 for both of those drivers on the screen at the moment John Clements in the number 88 podium sim racing car coming down the hill towards Bruxelles he looks in fairly good control through Lecom and Malmedy 
And the run through the right hand of Hairpin. He seems to have the car fairly well controlled underneath. Getting a big kick of oversteer there as he bounced off the kerb through speakers. Heading down the hill towards Buon. He's currently 7th in the standings. 0.855 of a second off Burke's provisional pole time. As he goes through the double left at Buon. Opting to stick towards the inside of that second apex really there. And then coming up towards the Piff Path or Fania. Gets the car into the right. Slight oversteer Ooh. in the middle though. Nice drift. Managed to hold it through the left. And David, just one slide like that can cost you plenty of time. And with a long lap at Spa, it all starts adding up. Yeah, absolutely. Not the way you want to be going through Piff Path there. Not at all. Like I say, getting, a, getting the back end out. You see Ross Perrig looks a little bit more planted as he comes through Brussels at the top of the the top of the uh, top of the hill and coming down towards the tracks where you need to be on the limit every at every moment but the track limits are really not very clear it's you come out of uh, no name there and of course you come down through pool on any little you, you'd think it's just a case of right if i go on if i get all four wheels past those white lines i'll get a track limit penalty but on some of them it is and some of them it isn't it's quite a difficult one to manage but uh everyone seems to be doing a pretty good job at the moment barring i did notice florian bauer seems to be struggling a little bit he's he's got a couple of times on the board so far but none have actually been valid so he's still currently sitting back in 26 without a lap time on the board and with six and a bit minutes left he's got to uh he's got to pull a finger out of at the, at the bag and uh and like his good mate Tom Rowe, we're riding on long side at the moment, is uh, struggling a little bit. Tom now half a second up on his time. That would leapfrog him, well, into that sizable margin. I say sizable. It's 0.36 of a second between Luca Burke and Ross McGregor on the front row. So we could see the debutante taking to the front row of the race. But as we see, as he runs through campus there and through Paul Frey, he's using all of the available track potentially risking invalidating his lap as they he begins the climb uphill it doesn't seem like it from the cameras they don't do it justice but it is uphill all the way through Blanchemont and up towards the bus stop as he throws the car into the left a big kick of understeer there that just drags him out wide and that's it lap time gone for Raya with seven minutes to go he'll have to get himself dusted off and go once again. But it's positive driving from Rye at the moment, David. Looks like he has the pace to be right up there. Absolutely. And you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Tim, very familiar with these Caymans, of course, running it in the uh, Ravenol GT series as well. And uh, he certainly knows how to set up a car as well. And in, unfortunately for that, it's a uh, fact I'm just looking. He has, he does look to as if he's uh, actually gone up the timings a little bit. I'm just checking it on the uh, live time. He actually went pole too. So it looks like even though he went wide through Blanchemont, he clearly didn't go wide enough to validate track limits. That just proves my point for a moment ago. But uh, eight hundredths of a second faster than Luca Burke. Then I did see he was pretty quick in practice, and that really proves the point. Uh, clearly, seems like Luca's got his work cut out with someone this evening. Well, that'll be exciting, won't it? That's what we like to see. None of this lights to flag running for Burke. Want some challenge for the uh, number 87 driver, the reigning champion. On screen at the moment, Bradley Brockies from the E-Team Brit uh, squad. He's one oh, in the number 105. He's half a second up on his time. I could see him move slightly up the order. It's great to see these guys racing. They're certainly getting to grips with the Cayman. Oh, no, Max, who said, Max Spoon, his teammate in the number 63, said he was more confident with LMP2 machinery. So a slight drop off in downforce available when he tops to the Cayman GT4s. But they're certainly looking to find their pace and find improvements across the races. Indeed, Bradley uh, getting his uh, best, uh, best qualifying last time out of Mizano, 27th finishing 24th overall so he's knocking on the door of the top 20 and let's see if he can do the same this evening through the bus stop a nice clean run very uneventful exactly what you need to that final chicane as he crosses the timing line he does improve but he stays 25th he's reduced the margin to Kirk Heath in the 1-2-1 turn one esports car Luca Burke though looking like he wants to respond immediately David as he comes flying over the top of the hill at Radion this is a position we've rarely seen Luca in, having to fight to get the lead back. Yeah, absolutely. Coming down the Kemmel Strait, he's a tenth up at the moment, so that's going to be enough. But I can guarantee you that Tom's not going to let that lie anyway. Coming into the uh, the, first, the left, the right, left, right of uh, at the top of the hill of Le Com and into Mamadi, and he's on the ragged edge, isn't he? That setup looks fairly pinned. But a little snap of oversteer, that's going to lose him that tenth. Tom, we can see a picture in picture. He's a tenth up as well, coming into the bus stop chicane. So he's going to put in a 228.3, you'd imagine. Maybe even a 228.2, depending on how much he gains 
through the final corner. It's three tenths up here and going through the bus stop. That's going to be a 2.28.1 as it quite goes over the line. Wow. Goodness me. Luca has got his work out this evening and we have got an absolute barnstorm race coming up for you if it stays like this. And with the time ticking down, David, it looked like Luca Burke might only have a couple more opportunities to respond, being this lap and the next. So Burke is pushed into the corner, fighting his way to get a pole position back. Tom Riot, debut performance. He's certainly turning up the heat this evening, a two minute 28.248 season wrestle provisional pole from the hands of our reigning champion Burke in the 87 looking like he's improving on this lap could potentially close the margin down deep but just as I say that we hear that Tom Ryer is improving once again he's a tenth up now three tenths up as he goes through the first sector he's at the top of the hill at Malmody and he's lost the time now through that opening uh, opening sequence there so Ryder's going to have to dust himself off and go again, but Burke is running out of time to fight back as he comes through the bus stop. A little bit of traffic ahead, that's when the EGT Motorsport cars looks like he's not too close to cause any sort of impedance there. He's got two tenths, it's going to be close across the line, and wow, <laughs> there's the margin, 0 0.120 of a second. Currently separates Ryder in MSL Motorsport and Burke in the Rocket Simsport car. David, it's what we've come to know and love for the Esport Designs Cayman Super Cup. And Luke Burke, he's certainly in a new position this evening, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. I know he's uh, he's been he's had it all his way really up until up until now and he's uh, he's got someone who's clearly pushing him all the way and uh, both of them you would expect, although it looked like uh, Luca went very, very much over the top of uh, of of, of, of Eau Rouge and through Radion. So uh yeah, wonder if he's invalidated like Jack McIntyre a few times up as well as he's coming through Blanchemont around the final final couple of corners into the bus stop. He's going to look to improve. He's got a couple of positions potentially he can improve. Amazingly, he's actually eight tenths back off of Tom Ryer's uh, time at the moment, so it's time to gain. But there's a massive gap at the moment where uh, you've got Tom Ryer, you see, on pole, Luca Burke a tenth back, uh, Ross McGregor a couple of hundredths back from him as well, and Jack McIntyre does improve but must have validated his lap at one point because it's a 228.5 would have put him fourth and would have only put him a couple of tenths back but clearly had a had a track a excursion at one point as Luca Burt did as well but they might just about have enough time to get another lap in so we'll see how that he'll see how things conclude well this will be Luca Burke's last opportunity to improve with nearly half a minute left on the clock I don't think he'll get back round to the flag and he's a tenth down so it looks like Burke's not going to be able to improve Meanwhile, Ross McGregor in the number 33 Zantro Sim Sport car is improving. He's up a tenth. And if he can do that, if he can hold this advantage all the way around, he's gone, oh, he's gone slightly wide there. Looks like there should be some uh, potential internet connection issues there for McGregor. I was thinking he had dropped it into the barrier, uh, golf racing style from the six hours of Spa. Uh, but anyway, McGregor rounding Rivage and Brussel. Looking like he was improving. He was a tenth up, 0.16 of a second down on the current pole time. So if he can hold that advantage through to the flag, he could knock Burke off pole with, uh, well, the chequered flag is out. So drivers need to complete their final time. It's very much their last opportunity and taking his last opportunity just to rub it in the faces of his competitors. Tom Ryer, David on in the series, is currently three tenths up on his time. This would really prove what he's uh, capable of giving in this championship with the number two MSL Most Sports Cayman looking very quick indeed in qualifying. It's currently 0.120 of a second up on Luca Burke and improving on this time as Burke is in the pit lane after taking the chequered flag, unable to reclaim pole position. So Ryder doesn't need to finish this lap. He's got the pole as it stands. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him just bettering his time to prove a point, David. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Statement start to your season as MSL Motorsports driver. Unbelievable stuff from Tom. So, so quick tonight. Clearly on top of things. And like I say, he's familiar with that Cayman and uh, he's proven a point at the moment. Ross McGregor, the only one out on track who could do anything. But as you heard before, he lost a little bit of time through the middle sector. He's coming up towards the bus stop at the moment. So he's a couple of metres ahead of Tom, but he's now elected to go back to pit lane as well. So you can only imagine we are watching to see where the current pole position man, Tom Ryer, is actually going to improve his time, which it looks like he might well do. 
it's going to be close. He's coming through the bus stop chicane. He looks nice and clean and tidy through there. Wants to get on the power as early as possible. 228, 248 to beat. Is he going to improve? He doesn't, but he didn't really need to in the end, Tim, did he? You saw him just kind of cruise over the line. And as a result, a statement pole position. What a race we've got in, us, in store for us this evening. Well, it's going to be a thriller as always. 90 minutes laid before us for this third round of the Esports Cayman Super Cup. It's Tom Riot, debutant in the series, who takes pole position, a two-minute 28.248 season snatch pole position from reigning champion Luca Burke, who will start alongside him in the number 87 Rocket Sim Support Machine. Then it's Ross McGregor in third alongside Al Buncombe. Jack McIntyre and Bastian Zenefels make up the third row in fifth and sixth, with Ben Hitz taking seventh alongside Will Dendy in eighth. Then it's Danny Greaser in the second of the Haupt cars and John Clements from Podium Sim Racing in 10th place. Then Jack Noller in 11th alongside Chris Crossman with David Belanger in 13th in the number triple two EGT motorsports car. Then it's Florian Bauer for eSport Designs in, in 14th place alongside Regan Mitchell, the only driver to have scored points in every race of this championship and indeed of this series so far. So let's see if he can hold that position or push up inside the top 10. Mitchell starting from 15th. Then it's uh, Pierre-Olivier Clotier in 16th alongside Jack Smith, 17th. And it's Thomas Lavoie, 18th. Kieran Vidago, 19th with Stain Passport for Simsport Racing, rounding out your top 20 ahead of Steve Hinden, the number 80 eSport Designs came. And not having his best qualifying here at Spa, really looking to kick on and indeed kick up the order. But as we see... David, it's, uh, we've got Steve Proudly out there on the Simsport Solutions Segway. He's having a hard time getting up the hill. He's actually blowing like a steam train, he tells us, on his way up the hill, uh, going back through the grid. The cars look fantastic, as always. And I think we've got a thriller set for us this evening. Absolutely, yeah. I can imagine Steve's going to be very, very tired by the end of this run up the hill. He's got to go past, what, 27 cars all the way up the hill. And uh, yeah, tw the good thing is, like you say, 27 very, very good looking cars indeed. And uh, it, it still it still confuses me why the uh, the start fit, this start is is around this corner. I always think it's probably better to have it into the source, but it does mean you get to see 27 cars going up over Rouge and Anger very close to each other and uh, no quarter given. And we're going to see that in just over three minutes or just over five minutes time if you count the formation lap as well. And it's uh, yeah, going to be 90 minutes of, of, of really probably having no idea who's going to win until the last five and uh, I for one cannot wait that's exactly how we like it isn't it David but yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> a different start to the race so obviously we're not taking the green flag at the F1 uh, straight if you like the Grand Prix start finish line the race will go green on the run down the hill from La Source past what's the endurance pits or the classic pits however you want to call it and the run down towards Eau Rouge so Really, the first corner the driver's tackle is one of the most daunting turns in the motorsport world. So let's see how this grid of 27 drivers handle the first couple of corners. Because you didn't have a, the cleanest of starts to the race at Misano, and the drivers have all been warned about how incidents on the first lap are treated with particularly strict uh, engagement. And we do, of course, have live stewarding brought to us uh, by race department and indeed the team at grid finder and a quick shout out indeed to our sponsors who are making this championship possible it's great to have on board msl motorsport consultancy porsche sport race department and grid finder with all the races you'll see in the championship hosted on the simracing.gp platform and i'm looking forward to seeing james magill's shots post race because some excellent sim racing photography coming out of the series as well but there are two lines of 14 cars, well, 13 and 14, we're missing one driver off the back of the grid to make it two even rows. But David, Spa is a circuit that we've said before lends itself to racing. And with a 90 minute race ahead of us, we've got plenty of time for that. We're going to see, though, the dice rolled, I believe, with pit strategy because the pit lane is so long here. It doesn't matter if you're down the order, play your cards right, and you could be right up towards the sharp end. 
Yeah, absolutely, and it it, it makes it so much more interesting when you've got a pit lane that makes has such a massive detriment. It's if if you hit, if you have any sort of damage and you go in and fix that, you're losing almost an entire lap just by going through there. It's it's quite a behemoth in terms of the grander scheme of things. But um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how these guys do. Of course, as as those of you who have, who have attended before, you will know this. But if you're new, then welcome along. Of course, the guys have got limited tyre sets for this one. They've only got four to play with for these longer races, three for the sprint races. And uh, it does give them the flexibility, though, to pit whenever they want, as uh, Florian Bauer elected to do at Mizano last week, which he was a little bit annoyed about. Of course, <laughs> don't need to pit in the 60-minute races, Florian. If you watch this one back, then uh, next week, just remember, you don't have to pit because you were... Uh, it was quite close to a podium last weekend as Tom Ryer leads us away for the formation lap. But yeah, with that flexibility of it being an open pit window, it does open up the opportunity for people to try something a little bit different. Like you say, get the gamble out. And uh, if you do have a slightly more eventful first couple of corners, is 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 it's entirely possible, especially at Spa, then uh, it gives you the chance to try something a little bit different. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll see some brilliant racing, but it'll be interesting to see what sort of strategies people are going to go for as well. We saw a mix of strategies in the first pit stop race of the series at Barcelona, looking at Ross McGregor in the number 33. He pitted very early on, just outside uh, 60 minutes to go, dropped right down the order, but through lapping cleanly, he was able to get back to fourth place come the chequered flag. We obviously saw the battle between Kev Critchley and Jack McIntyre for the overall win, with Critchley taking tyres at the stop and able to use that fresh rubber to close down the margin to the race leader McIntyre and then pass him to take victory on his debut appearance. Then Jack Noller in third convinced his rubber to go the whole whole race distance, whilst Regan Mitchell behind, who ended up uh, taking a drive through penalty in the closing stages, had taken new rubber. David, there's a mix of strategies. we are going to have to fight through 90 minutes of racing to get to the chequered flag. So, as much about staying clean as it is about being quick and nailing your pit stops. Oh, absolutely, Tim. And like you say, it's going to be interesting to see whether people do go for the two different tyres as well. If it, it, it feels to me like you do need to go for two tire, two sets of tyres in this race. Spa is notoriously heavy on tyres because you've got a lot of very, very quick corners. They're going to be, the tyres are going to be screaming, especially through the likes of Puon and places like that as you go around the track. So. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether people do. I think, obviously, of course, because in ACC we can't actually tell you that until they've done it. It'll be very quick and obvious to see who has and who hasn't elected to uh, to put on some fresh rubber. Because as we saw, as you rightly mentioned, with Jack Nollo in particular from the uh, the race at Catalunya a couple of weeks ago, it was very, very clear very quickly when he didn't put in put on some fresh tyres because you just saw the amount of time he lost. It was worth a gamble, and obviously got the podium in the end as well. But yeah, something you need to be very careful of doing because you need to have a nice and big enough gap behind you to uh, to really make it pay. But we'll be doing our best to keep across the strategy and you indeed can join in the fun and watch the live timing brought to you from pitwall.live. If you head over there and head to the Simsport Solutions server, you'll be able to see live timing of the race this evening. It's always worth just throwing that on, on the screen next to you or having it open on uh, any available device just to help you keep across the strategy and see who's moving and shaking indeed up and down the order as Thomas Rye will be having a, a very fun time indeed on this uh, warm-up lap. we uh, thinking it's probably a bit too easy, David, and everyone needs to start trying a bit harder. David performance, he's on pole position, no one in front of him. He's going to need to get a clean start and kick on because with Burke McGregor and Buncombe behind, he's not going to have it easy if they have anything to say about it. Oh, absolutely. And of course, you, you, this is the track where it, this, well, you, technically you've obviously got a, a, a fairly, uh, fairly, uh, what should we say, a legendary corner, I suppose, as soon as you start the race. But after that, you've got quite a hefty long straight before the first real true braking zone. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how the slipstream takes into effect. You, I can imagine that those top five or six, all the way down, I mean, all the way down the field, let's be honest, they're all, if they've got the chance to, they will just dip in, in behind the man in front and uh, they will elect to try and get that slipstream down the back, down the Kemmel straight and into Le Comte for the first proper braking zone. And uh, I'm sure that'll be firmly in Luca's head. He won't necessarily want to try and make the move through a Rouge, but he'll try and sit behind Tom up through that first straight and uh, see if he can get the run into the into Le Comte and try and get the, win, uh, get the lead rather into the first proper corner. So as they file round the bus stop chicane, which completes the lap, but isn't the start of ours, they will have to go round the La Source hairpin two by two. Raya taking the chance to 
accelerate and brake and get some heat into the brakes because with such a long run between La Source and the green flag and then up towards the first braking point at Lake Com, any degree that can uh, be pumped into those brakes, indeed the tyres, will count when he gets to the first braking zone. I'm sure there'll be a slipstream fest all the way up over the hill and towards Lake Com. So let's see how this plays out as they round the source. Raya from Burke, McGregor, Bunker, McIntyre, your top five, then Xenophel's hits, Dendy, Clements and Danny Greaser rounding out your top ten as they head down the hill to collect the green flag and will get racing any second now. It was a brilliant beginning event at Barcelona. It was mayhem in Mazzano. So let's hope we have a sensational one at Spa as they take the green flag and Ryan moves over immediately to block Burke on the run down the hill and through a rouge for the first time. It looks like everyone gets there through there cleanly. But Burke is right on the bumper of the pole sitting. They're going to go side by side through the right-handed kink. And on the run up the Kemmel straight towards Le Combe behind a slipstream fest in the battle for third, seeing Buncan challenge McGregor. Indeed, McIntyre getting in on the action. They're nearly three wide for second place, but Raya holds the inside. Burke first to succumb. As we see a spinner, or oh, a sideways moment for Buncan. He's going to drop back to the middle of the pack. Indeed, a swarm of Caymans round through Le Combe, but Burke has got the run through Malmody and on the run down the hill towards Bruxelles. This could be a change for the lead as we see the number two and 87 go side by side around the long right-hander. Ryers held out onto the outside, which will become the inside through speakers. Can he stick the car in and make it work? But Burke goes the long way around, uses all the track on the exit and wrestles the lead off Tom Ryer. And this is exactly what we want to see, David. They're knocking blows into each other already. Oh, absolutely, Tim. What a brilliant overtake that was from Luca Burke and what brilliant race car from both of them. Gave, enough, gave each other enough space, but there was no quarter given, was there? What a fantastic start to this race we've had. These two already a second clear of Ross McGregor and Jack McIntyre and Xenophels and Will Dendy, who's made a good start from there as well. Ben Hitz dropping down a position and a little bit of a change a little bit further down as well. Florian Bauer looks to be a bit of a winner off the start as well. He's gained a couple of positions in the eSport Designs team car, as has Steve Hinden. He's up to 19th. But at the moment, Tom will be a little, I'm sure he'll be a little bit disappointed. It looked like he had it going through uh, up, up towards Lake Om. It didn't look like Luca went for as much slipstream as I expected he would do, but clearly had enough confidence in the car through the corners as they went down to themselves and some making moves stick going through speakers and uh, yeah brilliant brilliant work from the two of them but Tom is absolutely glued to the back of the number 87 Rocket Simsport car will he make a move into the bus stop chicane he doesn't this time but of course he knows there is a massive re massive straight coming up in a minute I think we're about to go to a replay to see what happened going into Lake Home. you can see oh, Al Buncombe catching one of the Rocket Cup uh, Lezancho cars or I think that's either Jack McIntyre or Ross McGregor so he's just come up the, on there. Two EGT motorsport cars getting caught together, and that's him, Al Buncombe, rather in the middle and getting caught up in a couple of cars there with two helps motorsports. He all gets caught into there. Didn't quite sit through the trees and he catches one of the sims. Was that Regan Mitchell? He caught up with there, and all sorts of carnage at the back end of the field. That explains Tim. why, Tim, that we've had a few people making up some positions off the first couple of corners. Bunker looked like he was turned by one of the Hout racing cars and then pinging off the barrier. He was just a sitting duck as others were forced to avoid. That was Aaron Martin Pilkerton and Regan Mitchell uh, also getting caught up. So we see Will Dendy now challenging for second place. He's got the slipstream off Burke, which is enabling him to drag up alongside Ryan. There's a slight hip check in the braking zone at Lake Com. Dendy very aggressive on the turn in almost forcing Ryer onto the grass there as it's four for the lead. And Ryer's not happy about it. He's straight on the button, flashing the lights and giving Dendy just a little tap there through Malmody to prove the point as McIntyre now looks to the inside into Bruce Elbers, unable to make the move. Ryer understeering wide when he went deep on the brakes. Looks like he might be able to hold on to that third place as they run through speakers. And all this battling is allowing Burke just to stretch his legs at the front and it just get a couple of cars length between himself as Dendy is then McIntyre gets the cut back through speakers and is up the inside of Raya on the run down towards Puon and in behind John Clements and Ross McGregor look like they're next to pounce but hasn't been an easy start for the pole sitter and debutant in the series Raya dropping from pole down to now fourth place as we're seeing a drive through penalty handed to Pierre Olivier Clotier for his contact with teammate in the triple two EGT motorsport car David Belange so not ideal for those two fingers crossed we'll see them bounce back uh, the last thing we're going to do David is hit your teammate 
Absolutely, and uh, unfortunately for Tom Ryan, talking to teammates, he hasn't really got anyone who can back him up at the moment. He's in a, he's in a very awkward stranglehold between literally every single Zancho and Rocket Sim Sport team car that I've ever seen on a track in my life. He's just been swamped by all of them, and it's one of those where overtaken by Will Dendy, and what a move that was from Will. A little bit aggressive, you have to say, but used the slipstream to full effect, and uh, now Tom's got John Clements looking for a move up into the bus stop. But yeah, one of them went past, then... Uh, then Jack McIntyre thinks, oh, I'll have, a, I'll have a bite of this action and uh, makes the move as well. So Tom, not the most but not the most positive start for him, but still one hour and 25 minutes still left to go in this race. So uh, still plenty of time for him to get himself back up the field and back up towards Luke Burke, which I'm sure is his ultimate target for the rest of this race. John Clements running in fifth in the number 88 podium sim racing car. His best uh, result, a sixth place at Kyle Army last season. He's yet to score points this championship campaign so he's running strongly at the moment at Spa and looking ready to make a move on Ryers. We see Dendy has closed the gap through a route all running four wheels over the curb and more through Radion. That will definitely be a strike against his name. We'll have to be wary of his further track limits abuses as we're seeing Danny Pisa and Pierre-Olivier Closier picking up drive-through penalties. Obviously we know uh, Closier had it for the in uh, contact with his teammate David Belanger so we'll have to see what happened to Danny Greaser, who's headed to pit lane now and dropping down the order. Dendy, though, closing up to the back of Burke and looking for the lead already on the run down the hill towards Brussel. It looks like Burke's let him go. That looked awfully orchestrated between the two of them. Drive through penalty for number 23, contact with the number nine, which caused multiple incidents. That drive through penalty is for Alex Buncombe, who I don't believe is running around anymore. So we'll have to see how that penalty gets applied. Dendy now leads the train, and it is a train indeed, David, because they're all starting to queue up, and with so many straight line uh, sections here at Spa, slipstream is very important. Absolutely, yeah, and we've seen that to full effect so far. Of course, we'll get in the move done on Tom Ryer before he's obviously, like you say, orchestrated move is probably an understatement on Luca Burke going through Brussels, but we won't say anything, of course, sister teammates. Interesting to think that, uh, if you're going to if you're going to put them into a real life example, I suppose you'd say the Rocket Simsport team is the Red Bull and the uh, Zancho one is the Alpha Tauri. So in didn't see it's that way round, but uh, yeah, plenty of plenty of movements <laughs> so far. And uh, for the first seven minutes, we've been treated to quite a fair bit of action. And if we get another hour and twenty three of the same, I'll be very happy. Um, just after half past so ten. Let's see as they round Blanchemont uh, for it's the third time. Dendy now streaking clear the number 28 car leading race for the first time as they come into the bus stop Burke closing up massively on the brakes he was running in slightly deep there that allowed McIntyre to close up he's bringing pole sitter Ryer with him then it's Clements McGregor and Hitz all in close company the top seven really nose to tail then a slightly extended gap of a second or so back uh, to Jack Muller. In fact, it's three seconds back to the number 36 MSL most requires a bit of a skirmish in the mid pack there. That's going to uh, push Burke slightly wide. He's now coming under fire from McIntyre on the run down the hill towards O'Rouge. The number 37 tucked in behind the number 87 as they go up through the climb and through Radion. All fair, all keeping to track limits very well behaved from the uh, second, third and fourth place cars to see that slipstream begin to kick in on the run up the Kemmel straight. McIntyre is going to be looking to the inside for second place into Lacom and Burke really can't fight it. McIntyre goes through looking to make amends for his rather uh, disappointing race at Mazzano. He's up to second place if he wanted to set about catching teammate Will Dendy who's currently leading the way now with an extended margin and behind it looked like we saw Ryan, there he is, just as the camera pans round, looking to get past Burke as well. He's trying to fight back after being stripped of his lead on the opening lap. If he makes a wrong move, John Clements is very close behind and will be looking to pounce, get inside the top four. Exactly what we like to see, some very hard but clean, fair racing at the top end of the standings at the moment. Right, just getting a, a hint of understeer there through Buon, which is dropping him off the back of Burke. This is the top seven in really close order. Hits at the back of the train in the number six Haupt racing machine, uh, set for what would be his best finish of the season, or tying his best result, which came at Mazzano last time out. And we saw he was, he was strong in the 
in the longer races, but just didn't have a clean run of things going from 8th to 13th in the opening round at Barcelona. But looking in contention at the moment, David, you're going to start thinking about strategy as we see confirmation on the screen. Number 23, Al Bunkham, has retired from the race, so another DNF for the uh, Rocket Sim Sport driver. But you, may, you might start thinking about strategy, David. Put yourself in a battle on a train like this, you're going to be looking at kinds of opportunity to really break free and start running cleanly. Absolutely. And speaking of that, Tim, you can see Florian Bauer's actually made his pit stop already. So he's made, he's elected to uh, to drop on to or get that pit stop out of the way nice and early at the moment. It's really impressive to see how well these guys are competing. At the moment, all a little bit of contact and spin there. And unfortunately, John Clements and Tom Ryan come off worse there. A little bit of contact Ooh. again. Oh, it's a little bit clumsy there from Tommy. Probably a little bit frustrated with how the race has gone so far. And that's not going to do him any help whatsoever. It was that concertina effect. It like Tom had a little bit more speed going through the source than Luca Burke caught the back of the Rocket Sim Sport car. Uh, John Clements then hit the back of Tom and then they all went spinning around doing a little bit of a synchronised pirouette and that's dropped Tom all the way down to 10th place under a bit of pressure now from uh, that's Jack Smith in the Sim Racing GP car and uh, teammate Jack Noller from MSL Motorsport in the JPS, JPS livery car is up into now 7th place so all change after a little bit of a clumsy coming together through the source there. So that's dropped Riot down the order and indeed dropped Clements out of a strong position inside the top five, allowing Will Dendy and Jack McIntyre some more breathing space at the top of the order with Luca Burke in third. Ross McGregor now runs in fourth with Ben Hitz up to fifth place as a result of the two drivers spinning at the source. We're seeing warning for the number 63 for a contact in the braking zone with Pierre Olivier Closi. I believe that is Max Spooner potentially being warned. So we'll have to make sure he keeps clean across the remaining uh, 78 minutes of tonight's event to avoid penalty. So if you're wanting to keep up with strategy, of course you can head over to pitwall.live and select the SimSport Solutions server to see how things are playing out. Or more simply, looking at this screen next to every driver's name, besides Florian Bauer at the moment, there's a number one in an orange box. That means those drivers are yet to serve their mandatory visit to pit lane. We want to keep an eye on that as we head into the rest of this race in the pit stop window. So let's see how this plays out. Chris Crossman here, BD Racing Car. Whoa, John Clements behind, getting very close to the wall. On the exit there of uh, the Paul Frere curve, very close, uh, cutting it fine with the outside tyre wall. I wonder if Clements is carrying some damage because it took a couple of knocks in that instant at La Source. Fingers crossed his car isn't uh, too badly damaged and he's able to keep the pace up. Crossman here, though, looking like he's running around well inside the top 10. And really, he had a, a nice standout performance, actually, at uh, Mizano, racing very cleanly up to fifth place, started fifth, finished fifth, but at the moment he's having to hold off a very quick John Clements for eighth place, the number 88, trying to go around the outside at the source. Very close there, Dave, he got the job done. Yeah, lovely little move there from John, clearly not letting any damage that he might have do him any disservice at the moment. I was interested to see whether him or Ryan did actually go into the pit lane there, just because of what's obviously what's happened, try and get themselves a bit of clear air. They didn't. Steve Hinden, though, at the moment on your screen, is currently up in, I was thinking he was in, yeah, 21st place, I think it was when he qualified up to 12. Fantastic showing from the series organiser, Steve, at the moment, he'll be very pleased. He did, did chime in to us just before broadcast started, saying he's only had about an hour's worth of practice and so busy work over the last few days. So he's doing well, and you just see Florian Bauer slap with a drive-through for his trouble, so he's made his pit stop. Actually, Chris Crossman and John Clements getting a little bit close together there, Slipstream doing Chris all the world of good coming down the Kemmel Straight, and it's just one of those where you almost him. If, if you're in that position, maybe you just wait through the source and try and get the move through the Kemmel Straight, and uh, that's exactly what Chris has done to full effect. We've seen drivers pulling that move as we see race control handing out a drive-through penalty for the number nine dangerous driving and causing a collision. I believe that's Danny Greaser, who's now retired in a Haupt racing team car. So uh, unable to serve that penalty in tonight's event. Will Dendy, though, going quick at the top of the standings without a slipstream through that first sector, a purple first sector. And he's setting the fastest laps of the race at the moment, which will see him take a, take a, a very nice pair of grid finder gloves away from him away from tonight's event if he has indeed set the fastest lap 
of the race and those gloves handed out at every event this season. And David, I don't know about you, I fancy getting in the car, strapping on some new tyres, not even bothering trying to compete the overall standings and just set a fastest lap and get a pair of those gloves. Absolutely. I mean, to be honest with you, Tim, I don't even know if I put on a fresh pair of tyres at the end of the race, I'd still get a fastest lap anyway, knowing know. the quality <laughs> of this field. But... You don't stand a chance, do we, do? No, absolutely. And yeah, you see Florian Barrow there just, just serving his drive through penalty. Can, can only be assuming that's drive uh, track limit, sorry, because nothing coming through from Stuart suggesting and he didn't look like he really got caught up in too much. But Steve Hinden under a bit of pressure here from Kieran Vidava, and that's Thomas Lavoie in the background as well. And that's Daryl Upton in the podium sim racing car, just a little bit further back as well. So Steve not necessarily forming a train as such, but he's going to be very aware of a handful of cars in his mirrors. And if he's not too careful, Stain Passport and David Bellinger are going to start to form the back of this train as well. But he's got a little bit of time ahead of him to Jack Smith in the sim racing GB car. So he'll be hoping to just get a little bit of a toe up the hill and just keep himself away from any real incidents. He did mention to us said that at the top of the broadcast, a little out of practice and was hoping to avoid any term on incidents. He seems to have done that so far as you see Regan Mitchell in the number 69 Central Racing car serving his mandatory pit stop as well. So some of the guys so far are looking to uh, to make those stops fairly early on the race. Mitchell caught up in that opening lap drama so opting to just head to pit lane, maybe fix the damage and run rounds. We see Raya to the outside getting past Chris Crossman on the run into Lacom. Gets the job done nicely. That's a battle for 8th, 9th and 10th with John Clements a couple of tenths further up the road. Here's Hinden battling hard with Vidargo who is running in the points. He's in 13th. Last time out a 14th place at Mazzano. Wasn't an easy race for him but with a 5th place finish at Barcelona in the pit stop race I wonder if we're yet to see where Vidargo's uh, pace really lies and I'm sure he's got something up his sleeves in terms of tyre strategy. These drivers battling 12th, 13th and 14th as you see side by side further back. Uh, that looked like Tom Lavoie and Daryl Upton battling out. Sorry, Tom Lavoie is behind Kieran Vidargo so a couple of drivers further back. Here's Daryl Upton battling away with a thing that could be Florian Bauer a lap, a lap down. down yeah I think that so, was him getting out of the way Tim sorry to get across there but I think that was him getting out of the way coming down the hill which might look like they were side by side which is clearly proving the point that two two, two pit stops in and Florian's already a lap off the pace which is uh, going to be a massive pain it's going to make this next hour and 13 minutes a very long one for him I think but finishing every race matters because seven points up for grabs to be added to your uh, eventual tally should you complete every event in the season and factor in that if you complete races you stand a chance of a prize draw for uh, for MSL Motorsport Consultancy offering the track day and some uh, driver coaching so it's all about getting those races finished and uh, taking the chequered flag to stand a chance of some very nice prizes indeed the driver who's certainly not having the best of runs this evening Tom Ryer in the MSL Motorsport number two car with that Rothman style livery started on pole and looked like he was going to be taking the fight to the front runners but now down in ninth place after a very uh, messy start shall we say locked in battle at the sharp end and then contact with John Clement saw him facing the wrong way at La Source and here is the podium sim racing driver who was involved in that instant they're now battling for eighth and ninth places respectively three seconds off the back of Jack Noller who seems to be going about his business nice and quietly but effectively as we know Jack always seems to do as we see Raya trying to go around the outside at Lake Com. he's still got the overlap as they go through the left hand a little bit of side to side contact nothing too malicious there Raya tries to get the cut back then through Malmody and on the run down the hill towards Bruxelles. He's unable to make the move just about. Oh, Clemens getting across the front and a bit of a nudge. Raya wants to get this pass done soon. Yeah, absolutely. He's got three and a bit seconds back up ahead to Jack Noller, his teammate, and he wants to get that done as soon as possible. Interestingly, John Clements did actually catch a little bit of grass as he came through Eau Rouge and onto the Camel Strait, which I did wonder might have given Tom quite an easy overtake, but clearly the, uh, the the speed difference between these two cars is not 
diff, uh, not pronounced enough to give Tom the move, but it looks as though it's a matter of time before Tom does make that move. He certainly looks to be quicker than John through most of this lap. He's uh, he's really sitting on the back, and I'm really intrigued to see what Chris Crossman's going to do. Of course, he's right on the back of these two as well, and he's uh, he's going to be keeping a very beady eye on, on proceedings to see if there's a chance for him to make a position here as well. So this trio locked together then, fighting for eight, ninth and tenth, whilst at the front of the order, Will Dendy's now got the best part of a two-second lead over Zancho Sim Sport teammate Jack McIntyre and it's Luca Burke who's in third in the number 87 car on screen at the moment who's got uh, ooh, sideways there through the bus stop and that might allow Ross McGregor the cut back and indeed it has done so number 33 getting past our reigning champion on the run up towards La Source so it's changed at the podium and it's a Zancho Sim Sport 1, 2, 3 at the moment with Burke now in fourth and Ben Hitz, the help racing team, in fifth place. Dendy really setting the pace at the top of the standings. He was a six tenths of a second faster than Jack McIntyre on that previous lap. So extending his lead as we head uh, towards the hour mark and at uh, 60 minutes to go. So let's see how the race pans out from here. Drivers will be needing to make a mandatory stop at some point and we've discussed tyre strategy earlier and let's see if there indeed are some alternate runnings to strategy Regan Mitchell down in 23rd we know he's completed his pit stop as we see Crossman attempting to fight back on Raya barely a, a car's width the Cayman's width on the inside there Raya squeezing him to the inside he's trying to go around the outside now in defending his position and run Crossman out of road into Malmody and does so but all this fighting is dropping them off the back of John Clements who's now looking to kick on and close the gap to Nola but really David any battle like that can cost you time and battle upon battle and the seconds add up and come race finish you might be further down in the order than you'd planned. Absolutely Tim and you can already see that John Clements is already a second and a second and a bit further back to Jack Noller than yours on the last lap and uh, Tom Wright already losing nearly a second to John in the uh, in the little battle he had with Chris Cross from there. I was very worried that it looked like Tom was all, almost unbeknown to him was just shifting across the front of Chris Crossman. I was worried we would get a very big accident down the straight. Fortunately that was avoided and uh, yeah brilliant defensive work from the MSL motorsport driver and uh, Unfortunate for Chris that he didn't manage to make the move because it looked like he had it all sorted and then Tom just managed to hold it around the outside. See Daryl Upton all over the back of Tom Lavoie, a little bit further back down the train in 15th at the moment. That is, of course, the final points paying position. Of course, paying all the way down to 15th this time round in Season 2 of the Cayman Super Cup here with eSport Designs, courtesy of MSL Motorsport Consultancy. That's a bit of a mouthful. As you see Florian Bauer in the pits again, Tim. Surely that's not going to be a uh, another drive through penalty. Maybe he's uh, he's electing to uh, call it a day early because it's not been his race so far. It's not been his race indeed. A previous uh, lap time looking competitive. Well, it was a two thirty four, so yeah, a bit slower. So I reckon Bauer there is opting to head to pit lane and call it quits. As we see Upton now trying to go around the outside of Lavoie on the run in to the bus stop. Get the cut back here through the second part and a nice run along the start finish straight, but no. Got a bit of contact with the curb there as we see the first pit stop from our front runners, Tom Ryer in the number two, heading to pit lane after 23 minutes of action. So let's see if that's his strategy call then for tonight. Only one stop needed. We we'll wonder what his uh, tyre call will be. He's going to have to spend a long time though. He sat in pit lane, a very long pit lane here at Spa. Strategy is going to be very important indeed. Hinder note up to 11 all over the back of Jack Smith. Steve's going to be happy with this one at the moment, looking to make an improvement on his position on the run-up. Kemmel straight into Lake Comey, looks to the inside, but uh, not really forecasting a move there, more just trying to do his best to distract the Sim Racing GP car on the run through Lake Com. And Daryl Upton and Thomas Lavoie still battling. But David, sometimes when you're doing your best to catch a driver and make a move, yeah, you know, pulling along to one side and flashing the lights a little bit in the mirror and letting them know you're there is, is all great and, you know, can work in your favour in terms of distracting and applying pressure to the driver in front. Crucially, costly lap time. 
Yeah, absolutely, Tim. And it's, it's one of those that you can do it and you can lose a very minimal amount of lap time if, you, if you're clever about it. And potentially, if you're really good at it, you can obviously send the uh, send the guy in front of you off towards a mistake and uh, you can get the position yourself. But it's it's not really something that is, is going to be that useful, I don't think. I think if you're going to be quick enough, if you've got the slipstream down the main straight, uh, down the camel straight, rather, you are just going to make the move. It's as simple as that. And what Steve did there... Dare I say it was a little bit surprising, if I'm honest. I just don't think it was really something needed to be done. And as a result, as you can see, he's dropped himself back into the clutches of Kieran Bidargo, who's going to be looking for an improvement. As Steve goes very wide through campus. And Stavolo Kieran's at the inside. It's going to be not really a place you can make the move. And Kieran backs out of it as a result. As again, it's one of those where a little bit of... Uh, maybe a little, bit of bit, a little bit of caution and a little bit of uh, patience might have been... The, uh, the better thing to do there from Kieran's point of view. But as a result, this is making them drop back from Jack Smith, who's uh, getting himself a little bit of time ahead. And we'll be focusing his uh, crosshairs very much on Chris Crossman ahead. He's only a couple of seconds up the road. Crosshairs on Chris Crossman, that's a bit of a tough twist, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> one to write down and try again uh, another time. Uh, as you see, Will Dendy, though, leading the way. He's got traffic now in front of Regan Mitchell is the next lap car for him to deal with. Fingers crossed for Will that he can get past cleanly and kick on because his lap, his gap now is 3.6 seconds. So it's all going to plan at the moment for the number 28 Zancho Sim Sport driver. And Steve Hinden really doing his best to apply the, uh, well, rather cope with the pressure from Kieran Vidargo in the battle for 11th place. And there you can see on the picture in picture, Will Dendy running through Lecom, that car in front isn't for position, it's Regan Mitchell who's about to go on a lap down if not more uh, from 23rd place and let's see if the blue flags start waving shortly, really the crucial driver to keep an eye on further down the standings is Tom Ryer in the number two, he's now emerged back out on track, such as the time loss here at Spa that whilst race leader Dendy heads into Puon uh, Ryers just going through the bus stop so there's so much time in the pit lane to be won or lost he spent 1 minute 32 seconds from pit in to pit out so let's see how that compares to other drivers and how they're faring on fuel and tyre strategies it's Kieran Padago really keen to get a move done on Hinden and all this battling is dropping them off the back of Jack Smith in the number 14 but David, a question for you. How would you choose to split the race in terms of strategy? Are you going to brave it and take your rubber all the way from, from flag to flag? Or, I know you said earlier that you think tyres are, are crucial here at a circuit like Spa, but you know, roll the dice sometimes when you're in the heat of the moment and make something happen. Yeah, it's a difficult one to call, isn't it, Tim? I think obviously you've got to pay into, pay into account. It is 8.30 at night in the server at the moment, so it's getting cooler and cooler. We've already dropped a couple of degrees temperature since the start of the race and since qualifying as well. I was actually just thinking about it as you were talking and I think if I if I had to pick and it was a completely clean race I'd probably try and leave it as late as possible the further down the field I am. Like you say you look at Tom Rye he's been quite fortunate because as you mentioned he's got an enormous gap behind him back to Regan Mitchell so he's not really he's not going to be susceptible to having to uh, to pull over for the lapped cars but if you're someone like potentially Thomas Lavoie, David Belanger and, and further down the grid from them you'd probably want to try and stick it out and just hope that some of the front hope that some of the front runners actually drop into the pits because then you're not going to be caught up in the blue flags but yeah it, like you say if things happen in races and you've seen them have then it can completely throw a cat amongst the pigeons and all of your planning will go out the window which is normally the case <laughs> it's normally what happens isn't it that you lay out your strategy and then lo and behold you're somewhere different to where you expected to be and to tear up the rule book and tear up all your notes and, and try again and do it on the fly but flying at the moment is Ross McGregor he's closed up the gap to Jack McIntyre definitely benefiting from the slipstream on the run up the Kemmel straight as we go pitcher in pitcher now Kieran Vidargo attempting to make that move on Steve Hinden Simsport racing machine looking for a way past the Eastport designs came and on the run up through the kink and on the long drag up the Kemmel straight to they come drivers moving left and right attempting to get the slipstream or indeed diverge the driver away from it behind but as they head into Lecom Vidalgo steams up the inside can he get it stopped yes wow he manages to almost do a bit of a block pass there on Hinton fantastic stuff from Kieran how on earth did he get that thing stopped it's almost like he, he braked about 100 meters later than Steve did that was incredible I was just about to say I was I was wondering if Steve would keep the uh, position I was going to say that that livery I can tell 
I can protest to does actually gain you a couple of kilometres down the straight as well, as I found out on Saturday. But, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, Kieran was just so late on the brakes. He's got a little bit wide going through speakers. Oh, a little bit of contact nearly between him and Vidago there, but he just was so late on the brakes. And this is not a place where Steve wants to be making a move. Yeah, rightly so, backed out of it. But I, I, I'm just amazed as to how Kieran actually managed to get that thing stopped. He's, he's clearly got some sort of ballast in there, or he's, he's just dropped an anchor as he's gone into Lake On because he stopped that from so close to the apex and managed to uh, get the move done in a beautiful way. I reckon he was deploying uh, some sort of air parachute there to get the car stopped uh, into Lake On. Uh, Tom Ryder is still down in 20 seconds. That's the driver we, we have looked at in terms of strategy uh, just to see where he's at in terms of fighting his way through the order on pit stops. Will Dendy though is in pit lane, the number 28. I wonder what's happened there. Uh, he is in pit lane, indeed losing the lead at the moment, McGregor now and Burke through. So it looks like, unless drama's befallen our race leader, David, he's opting to head to pit lane. Yeah, absolutely. A bit of a weird one, unless, yeah, like I say, it could be a strategy call. Of course, we did notice he was losing maybe a little bit of time to the guys behind him. So maybe a sensible call if it looks like you're going to be... Uh, it looks like you're going to be losing too much time for them. Get some fresh rubber on if you've got the option to do so and get back out and try and uh, yeah, try and jump back in. And that looks like that's the plan for him tonight. So let's see then how it unfolds for Dendy. Uh, it's now McIntyre who takes the lead at the top of the standings, uh, followed by uh, Ross McGregor up to second, Luca Burke, and then. Well, Dendy, as we know, is in pit lane at the moment. Uh, then Ben Hitz running around in fifth place. They're still struggling to get past the traffic, which is Regan Mitchell. So let's see if they can get past the uh, number 69 Simsport Solutions car as they run through Bruxelles and Rivage. And that's going to cost them time, David, isn't it? Behind traffic like that, because you need to get through, you need to get past those blue flags and the cars that are not running at your pace, or crucially, they're not in your race. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a difficult one, and it's one that you've got to really be quite careful in terms of uh, in terms of getting stuck in, in overtaking back markers at any track is difficult at Spa. You've got quite a lot of straights where hopefully the guys in front of you can just, just back off a little bit and keep going. But uh, yeah, certainly one of those where, especially given the, the time, we've mentioned it so many times, the time that you lose in the uh, in the pit in the pit lane journey, if you want to call it that, because it just feels like it goes on for that long, it is something that you've got to be really really careful with and try and time it absolutely right. So let's see then how the drivers can make best of the race strategy. Jack McIntyre is now leading the way, but he's under pressure from Ross McGregor behind, and then Luca Burke in third is one and a half seconds back, and that time can definitely be won and lost in pit lane, Ben hits in fourth, and then Bastian Zenefels in fifth place at the moment. As we then see drivers, Jack Noller up to sixth, John Clements seventh, Chris Crossman in eighth, uh, in the BD Racing car, representing the team, the sole BD Racing driver out there tonight with Kev Critchley unable to take part, Jack Smith in ninth, Kieran Vidargo in 10th place at the moment. And then we've got Steve Hinden, who's been locked in battle all evening. I'm sure he's got a smile on his face at the moment, David, in that battle for 11th place and 10th and 11th with Kieran Vidago indeed. But here we see McIntyre, McGregor, Burke hits the, this top five. He yet to head to pit lanes. So they're clearly got something different up their sleeves compared to our first world race leader, Will Dendy. Yeah, absolutely, Tim. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it's quite impressive to see these guys have kept close this entire way through. And one thing I have noticed, if you see the timing tower, I've just noticed that Tom Ryder is actually only three tenths per second back from Will Dendy after the two pit stops have been made. So going to be very interesting to see how that pays out. And it seems like the undercut is working for Tom so far, either that or, as we mentioned, obviously we saw Will Pitt a little bit earlier than we maybe expected. So uh, hopefully... No issues for the number 28 car at this moment in time. Well, David, I'm able to answer your question, actually. I'm quite uh, proud of myself for doing this already. Looking at the timings on pitwall.live, the difference between their pit stops was, I say, sizable. It was the best part of half a minute. Will Dendy in pit lane from pit in to pit out, one minute 57. 
Tom Raya, 1 minute 32. So that's enabled him to close that gap. And I would say that that's just a choice of not taking tyres. I wonder if Raya's decided to stick it out on the rubber he has and see if he can go the full 90 minutes without needing a fresh set of tyres. So let's see already how these different strategy calls play out. Jack McIntyre, though, leading the way. Best part of four tenths ahead of Ross McGregor with Burke in third. Now reduced margin 1.2 seconds back. It's Ben Hitz in the help racing number six and four for Bastian Zenefels inside the top five. David, if you, you've got to roll the dice if you're further down the order, but for drivers like Will Dendy now, who've made their stop, and yes, he's got competition in the form of Tom Riot, you might find yourself coming a cropper with traffic and drivers that you're going to need to pass if you want to get the best race result. Yeah, absolutely, but it's one of those where you're, you're almost with the perfect person. You're with someone who you know is as quick as you, based on the qualifying times and stuff you've put in, but you also can see that you've got a bit of yeah, a bit of bit of chance maybe to work together with them, which is which is interesting. So you see Jack McIntyre and Ross McGregor going side by side through Blanchemont at the moment. Jack just holding on to on oh, in fact he's lost the move, lost the position. Apologies. So going to the bus stop, Ross McGregor, um, yeah, losing losing first place to Jack McIntyre. Sorry, wrong way around again. Getting all crossed up, need to put the teeth back in. But that's giving Luca a chance to get back in to the action as well so all change at the top and Ben Hitz just dropping off a little bit falling back into the clutch of Sebastian Zenefels but these front three are really putting the hammer down and effectively at this stage too it feels like they're hot lapping right now they're going so quickly they're just uh, they're just running as quickly as they can as you see Jack Noller MSL Motorsport number 36 car has elected to serve his managed pit stop so he is going to drop down we'll see where he comes out over the next couple of seconds over the next minute or so so let's see where the MSL Motorsport machine he merges back on pit lane, but a change for the lead. McGregor through, McIntyre second while they're battling side by side. And that's going to allow Burke to really close up on the back of the number 37 on the run up towards Lacombe, but unable to get the move done that time. As we see picture in picture, uh, Steve Hinden on your screen at the moment. Uh, I think my, my stream's just a little bit behind, so apologies if I'm bringing you stuff slightly late. Um, just having to see uh, adjust my timings etc and see what's going on but yeah McGregor leading the way now with McIntyre and Burke second and third they're all bunching up and potentially costing each other time with battling so let's see where Nola drops to as you can see the number 36 car tumbling down the the timing tower on that left hand side he's really going to be uh, a marker really a benchmark as to where he emerges as actually looking on the timing screen though it looks like tom ryer has got past will dendy so that is a move as a change for the net race lead so let's see how this plays out over the remaining 53 and a half minutes yeah absolutely it's exactly what you want to see fighting on track unfortunately like i say having a couple of uh, technical difficulties our broadcaster at steve Pratt has disappeared so we're having to watch it from a slightly delayed delayed chat so we uh, yeah, he's unfortunately dropped the stream. We can still just about see it on the uh, on the screen at the moment, so we're managing to do a job of keeping abreast of what's going on via the uh, chat. But like Tim said, just a few seconds behind. But yeah, very interesting to see Jack Knowledge just coming out of the pits as well. He's actually Tim. I mean, we'll wait for the time in tower to update itself as well. But looking at it at the moment, could be in with that little fight for the top three, which is interesting. Looking at the track map I've got on pitwall.live, he's running in towards Brussel and D Dendy's right up behind Tom. So they're very close together. And then there's a gap of a couple of seconds for what is the net overall race lead back to Jack Noller. So let's see where Noller really emerges as the pit strategy plays out. But looking towards the top of the standings, McGregor, McIntyre and Burke yet to go to pit lane. They're really playing a different strategy card to our earlier pole sitter and race leaders, Raya and Dendi, who are down the order in 19th and 20th. But as you can tell, judging by the green box next to their name, they have completed their pit stops and are running different strategy. I'm convinced Raya hasn't taken tyres and Dendi is on fresh rubber. So you would expect Dendi to have the pace over the remaining 51 and a bit minutes and indeed slightly longer for his, his stint which started just uh, after the hour mark 
you'd expect Dendy to have the pace, but he's unable really to get Pat past Raya, who must be on older tyres. Impressive stuff from Raya in his debut in the series. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see whether that does drop off at any point. Of course, I guess the, the difference being is the fact that we're not really, like you say, at that point where the tyre degradation is really going to have too much of an impact on them. They're still clawing back towards Pierre-Olivier Clote in the number 39 e, uh, EGT Motorsport team car. It was nine seconds the lap before. It's now back to eight and a half. So clawing back some time on them. So a little bit of a chance for them to both just stretch their legs a little bit and really start to try and make that undercut pay dividends because it's uh yeah they, they're in the exact they're in the perfect position effectively tom if he hasn't changed tires of course we can't see that unfortunately but like Tim, you mentioned Tim, will hopefully confirm that later on in the race as it starts to fall off or, or, or doesn't fall off of course if he has managed to change tires and just yeah. a very very efficient pit team we'll start to see where they'll start to funnel out as everyone else starts to uh, make their pit stops as well so it looks like, as we see McIntyre actually getting past McGregor on the run in towards the bus stop and getting the move done for the race leads. Very close indeed between the pair of them. Uh, just looking at the timing screens again, the Nola and Dendy pit stops both towards two minutes. So that looks like the kind of time for a stop with tyre change. But Raya, his time was a 1 minute 32 in pit lane. So that's a completely different strategy. 30 seconds gained, best part of, in the pit lane as uh, McIntyre and Burke are still going at it as they head down the hill and up in towards Eau Rouge currently. McIntyre behind Burke, but he will have the slipstream on the run up the hill through the Kemmel Strait and on towards Lacom and Malmody. They've got a little bit of a gap, well, two seconds now to McGregor. So this battling is costing them time to their competition at the moment. The two drivers. I wonder, David, actually, whether Dendy's just accepting that he needs to <laughs> minimise time loss now. And he's just running in behind Raya, who, who doesn't seem to be too far off the pace. I mean, Raya's lapping in a two, two minute 30s, two minute 30.4. And the only driver really quicker than him on that previous lap was McGregor, two twenty nine eight. So, look, I wonder if they're just accepting that this is where they are in the race at the moment. Let's run cleanly. Let's run as, as efficiently as we can. I hope we'll pick up some time when the rest of the pit stops happen. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Tim. I was just about to say the same thing myself. Like I say, just noticed the fact that they were close. But, yeah, Will hasn't really made any much any much of a dent on Tom's... Uh, position they're, they're running very close to like you mentioned but not close enough well yeah like i say not really treading tripping over tri uh, tripping up over each other like i've just done on my words there <laughs> and uh, yeah like you say maybe just subconsciously working together and uh, trying to get themselves back at the field it's working at the moment of course they're, they're running some very respectable lap times compared to those around them uh, running in the low in the mid to high 230s at the moment so still a little bit of time on the table you'd expect compared to those of those at the top end of the grid but if they can carry on doing what they're doing the benefit they have is, is they're not necessarily fighting at well, this stage at least for positions that in their opinion really matter so they can like you say just sort of sit back and go look yeah i'm fine where i am we'll work together we'll get some good laps in we'll almost hot lap for the rest of this next for the rest of the next sort of 30 minutes or so and as it does all shake out, we'll uh, we'll see where we end up after that. Almost running around in a, a cycling kind of team time trial style, aren't they? In, in just using the slipstream, not really costing each other too much lap time, just being you know together and having benefit of, of just uh, the slipstream and, and running around in relatively clear air as well. They've got a sizable gap up towards the next cars on track, and in front of them is the the battle between the number one to one of Kirk Heath and Stefan Bunatix in 15th and 16th. So there's a gap of potentially about 15, well, about 10 seconds potentially between uh, these two. As we did see, wow, a close battle through Le Com. Looked like Dendy was actually trying to make a move and that cost him a little bit of time on the run through that sequence of corners. As the top three, David, still yet to pit and we're coming into what is the second half of the race, 47 and a bit minutes to go. And I wonder if they're just going as long as possible into the event because, you know, different strategies, fresh tyres at the end, a shorter stop for fuel, that might all pay dividends just going that, that bit longer. 
Yeah, absolutely, Tim. It's going to be interesting to see how it does play out for these guys. And uh, yeah, it is one of them. You, you kind of you, you're on a balancing act for almost the entire race, and that's the beauty of this of this open pit window, if you want to call it that, where you can obviously because you can pit at any point in the race that you need to. It gives you that flexibility, but it also spices it up from our perspective of going going. Well, we have no idea when anyone is going to pit. You can see Zenefels, Hinden, Bellinger and Upton have all gone into the pits. That's going to shake it up a little bit. That's going to promote Raya and Dendy up a little bit further. Interestingly to note, did see uh, Will Dendy just look into the inside into Laycom on the last lap. So not necessarily sitting comfortably and waiting for uh, waiting for Tom to uh, to make the move, but still, still mug, mudding away and uh, putting some decent laps in. The thing I'm noticing though, Tim, is the fact that Ross McGregor is running almost a second quicker than the Malap at the moment. So the, the way they are going, it's working well for them to a certain extent, but there's still a lot of time on the table that Ross is really making the most out of. Potentially then, McGregor's going to be able to pit, and if all things go to plan, he'll emerge ahead of these guys who are essentially our net race leaders with still, well, the top, looking at the top, well, 13 or so, 15 actually, still yet to pit. You see there was that whole gaggle of cars, Xenophels, Hinden and Belanger, Upton all opting to take their stops on that previous lap. And we're now at the halfway point, 45 minutes into the event this evening. And it's Ross McGregor who leads the way, the 2.9 second margin ahead of reigning champion Luca Burke. Then it's Jack McIntyre in third. Ahead of Ben Hits for Help Racing Team in fourth place, and John Clements will be on for a season's best in fifth in the number 88 podium sim racing car. Bastian Zenefell is running around in sixth place ahead of Chris Crossman. Indeed, I believe they've just swapped positions as well. Jack Smith seventh, Kim Vidago eighth, Aaron Martin Pilkington up to ninth, but a long way off after being involved in the opening lap skirmish. Kirk Heath tenth, and Stefan Bunitic eleventh with the top 11 all still to make their mandatory visit to pit lane. They do need to complete a stop before the chequered flag. So let's see how the strategy plays out for the remaining half of this race. But McGregor looks like he's in the hot seat at the moment and set to repeat his uh, <clears throat> best result of a race uh, race victory, sorry, which came at the final round at, uh, sorry, uh, penultimate round at Snetterton in season one. He made that alternate strategy work in the opening round at Barcelona, pitting very early. It looks like he's rolling the dice once again this evening, David. Too tough to call, isn't it? 43 and three quarter minutes to go. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the beauty of this racing and the beauty of this series. I think Steve has sm smashed out of the park for series one of the eSport Designs came in Super Cup and he's doing a fantastic job of organising the belt of this farm around as well. And realistically now, like you say, we're really watching the, the yardstick, as it were, of, of Tom Ryer, obviously, of course, in front of, of previous race leader, or race leader himself, and in front of previous race leader, Will Bendy. It's really just comparing when people pit. Where are they going to come out in, compar in comparison to Tom Ryer? Because he's obviously the fastest man at the moment. Or he's the highest driver, rather, who has, of course, completed that mandatory pit stop. So really, it's just a case of, right, they've pitted. Where are they in relation to Tom? Because that, at the moment, is the, uh, is the mantle, is the, well, the man or men include Will Dendy, we can't just discount him at the moment. Um, they're the men to watch in terms of the, uh, the yeah the control variables to when everyone's going to come back out. It looks like Raya though, he's really thrown the proverbial cat amongst the pigeons because in not taking tyres, he, he takes, well, we're presuming he didn't take tyres, a 30 second difference in their pit times would certainly add up to refusing not to take a fresh set of rubber. He's really rolled the dice with that one and coming back from well he was down at the outskirts of the top 10 to then flip the script entirely and be running in the net race lead currently 10th now ahead of Will Dendy a crucial decision and one that could pay dividends if he can convince the rubber to go to the race end but race leader Ross McGregor he heads to pit lane now with 42 minutes to go and he's joined by John Clements and Chris Crossman also pitting from fifth and sixth it looked like we just saw Jack Smith in the Sim Racing GP car heading to pit lane as well. So this is going to be a crucial end to this lap and start to the next because, as you can see on the picture in picture, that's your race leader, Ross McGregor, and there's your net race leader, Tom Ryer, in the middle of your screen. And as they're rounding the Paul Frere curve, 
Ross McGregor is trundling down the pit lane at a painfully slow speed and into his pit stop. So let's keep an eye on how this battle pans out. This is what we love to see, David. This is it. This could be the race side by side on our screen at the moment. Absolutely. But the beauty of this series, as we mentioned it time and time again, it's not just one and one and lost in the pit lane. We're going to see Ross McGregor, if he does come out behind these guys, absolutely go hell for leather. If he does change his tyres, he's going to be on fresh rubber. He's going to be very, very quick. And he was already quick before the pit stop phase anyway. So he's just jumped back off the jacks. He's going to be coming back up. It looks like he's going to have a fairly hefty lead. And I'm just hearing from Steve Proudly, a broadcast director in our ear. He's finally back onto the Discord server, fortunately, so we can see it in real time again, which is an interesting five or five minutes or so. But <laughs> he's reckoning that uh, Ross McGregor hasn't changed tyres. As a result, he yeah, it didn't look like he was stopped for long enough, so he's come out very early. And as a result, he's at the top of the Kemmel straight. And these two on the left-hand side of the screen are just coming down to Auto Rouge. So it's advantage Ross McGregor as it stands. A 1 minute 39.3 length pit stop is only comparable really with Tom Ryan who did a 1.32. Dendy was in pit lane for 1 minute 57 so there's a whole difference of nearly half a minute. I wonder then whether Ross McGregor has reacted to seeing this. It's almost uh, akin to the 2010 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in Fernando Alonso pity and coming out behind Vitaly Petrov if you can remember. <laughs> I remember that one pretty well. It's a pretty exciting championship finale but we're seeing it in round three because race leader Will Dendy, he's pitted and he's come out stuck behind Tom Raya, clearly on a different strategy. I'm convinced McGregor has decided he doesn't want a part of this. He wants to steer as clear as possible and will accept the slightly second-hand tyres towards the end of the race if it means he can keep the race lead. He's in fourth and has emerged with a healthy lead over these two, David. Strategize being rolled all the time. Absolutely. Now, now, Luca Burke and Jack McIntyre, it's time to show your hand, gentlemen, because I'm waiting to see what they're going to do. Of course, they are now inherited. They've got Luca Burke has inherited the race lead. Ben hits impressively. I've got a big, got a big shout out to him. I know Danny Geese has been in the in the stream chat talking up how impressed he's doing and how happy he's that Ben's doing well. Doing a fantastic job sitting third at the moment. He, of course, is ahead of Ross McGregor. But of course, like I say, pit stops still need to be made by our top three, and then Kirk Heath and Stefan Brunetix as well. Bradley Brockies the lowest of the drivers still yet to make a pit stop but he's in pit lane now so he will be serving that mandatory pit stop as we speak so it's almost almost status quo in terms of pit stops being made nearly everyone We've got five guys left still to do it and the two that we're really going to be paying keen focus to are the two you can see on the screen at the moment Luca Burke of course race winner last time out with relative comfort you have to say at Mazzano was winning by I think it was a dozen or so seconds if not more uh, last week and uh, unfortunately missing the first round but managing to come back with a book up at the back of the bang last week him and Jack McIntyre up at the sharp end and really it's just a case of who's going to blink first and how long do they leave it knowing potentially I mean well they'll know that Ross has presumably not changed tyres but how do they know what Tom's doing as well because that's really going to be the one they need to compare themselves to they can't take tyres David surely like they, they know now that taking tyres will drop them in behind Raya and Dendy they've got to risk it on old rubbers, I, I can't see them taking tyres and emerging beneficiaries in, in this one in the remaining 38 minutes. Surely they're going to have to stick it out on old rubber. You'd have to think so, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, it is, like I say, it's it's circa, well, circa the F1 yesterday, where uh, it was fortunate that, that Lewis Hamilton had the chance to make that stop and go on to fresh tyres. And of course, Max didn't have a chance to. Sorry if anyone's not watched it yet, by the way. Spoiler alert. <laughs> won't, tell you what, they won't tell you what the result was, but... Uh, yeah, it was circa that. Like you say, you've just got to, you've got to risk it now. They force the hand, and as a result, yeah, they just have to do it. And you see now, the uh, the two in front at the moment, uh, Will Dendy being held up again by Kirk Heath. Tom Ryan's made the move, but Kirk is uh, proving a little bit of a stumbling block for Will. He just can't make the move, and it's even more time lost at the moment. As Ben Hits now goes into the pits, so we'll see where he comes out as well. It's not, it's, this isn't a blue flag situation. Kirk Heath is here battling for position because he's yet to make his pit stop to fight for sixth and seventh. Dendy's got to get the move done because Rye is escaping up the road and he goes through past the Turn 1 Esports car on the run into Puon. So Dendy having to battle for position and crucially losing time doing so. The gap now between himself and Rye are up to a second or so. So that again is more time lost for Dendy. And yes, he's got the new ties. Yes, he's got the fresh rubber in comparison to the competition, 
but at the moment it's not seeing him close those important gaps and those crucial margins and as Ross McGregor heads through Blanchemont these two are just rounding the Paul Frere curve so a sizable lead for the number 33 let's see Ben hits in pit lane as well what his strategy choice is fitting from third place in the runnings he was running around the top five really uh, before pit stop started and let's see how it plays out for the Hout Racing driver. He's still stationary in pit lane. And we'll get a confirmation of how long his pit time is and indeed whether he's opted for tyres. You see Aaron Martin Pilkerton in fifth. He's 3.3 seconds off the back of Steve Hinden. Three tenths of a second in front of David Belange in the number 222 EGT motorsports machine. An impressive drive from the number 626, Aaron Martin Pilkerton, involved in that drama at the start of the race up to 15. He could bag himself a point, but he's got to keep Belanger behind. They're going through the Blanchemont curve. He's going to have to squeeze Belanger out to the outside. And if Martin Pilkington can keep clean, he might be able to reinsert himself at the top of the MSL Motorsport Fast Forward Championship, which will see the driver who gains the most positions across the season, given two tickets to the British Grand Prix hopefully you'll be able to knock Daryl Upton off top spot. Looking at the timing screens though, David, I've just seen Ben hits. This is a real cat amongst the pigeons, a pit stop length of 1 minute 33. He's gone back out on track behind Ross McGregor, but in front of Tom Ryer and Will Dendy. Not taking tyres seems to be the beneficial strategy at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Like you say, if you go back to all of it, you see Luca Burke and Jack McIntyre also in the pits now. So I'm going to get them up on my uh, on my pit wall live so we can really see where they are in comparison to Ross Burger. They're actually up in pit lane at the moment. You just see them pop up on your screen now. So they are coasting through pit lane. Interesting to see that the two te the sister teams have uh, come at the same time. You see Jack McIntyre just giving Luca a little bit of a flash there. Just going, yeah, I'm with, I'm with you, mate. I'm, I'm right behind you. You see uh, Ross Burger going through... Uh, campus into Stavolo onto the back straights. So it's going to be keen to see what happens. But again, Tim, you've called it a couple of times before already. They can't take tyres. They have to. They have to pit now. Don't take tyres and come out. But they're so far away from getting into their pit box at the moment. See, they've just literally gone onto that second almost pit straight, if you want to call it that. They've not even gone up on the jacks yet. So it seems to me, based on where they are on the track, that Ross McGregor is going to inherit the lead by a good sort of 10 seconds at least, I reckon. Well, as McGregor steams into the bus stop at full chat, he's been out on the track for a little while now, about to complete his third lap of this stint. His competition is stationary in pit lane and will be forced to respond with strategy. They can't take tyres, as we said before, because that will drop them in behind Dendy and Raya. Raya still ahead of the number 28. He's holding on. So let's see, they're still stationary in pit lane. It could be a tyre change. It looks like it. They've been stationary for over that 1 minute 30 roughly time. But Burke and uh, McIntyre get rolling down pit lane. McIntyre, uh, McGregor, sorry, he's up through Radion and on the Kemmel straight. He's going to have a sizable lead heading into the final half an hour. But let's see where our reigning champion, Burke, and, uh, and McIntyre emerge onto pit That's... lane. There's Dendy and there's Rye going through a ruse. This is going to be insanely close on the run up the Kemmel Strait. They're not quite up to speed yet as they merge onto the track surface and they're going to be side by side, surely up through. And it looks like right, Rye has got the jump. How has he done that? Fantastic strategy <laughs> call early on. He's managed to get himself back in front of Luca Burke, who stripped the lead from him early on. Wow. I mean, you, you couldn't have called that, could you? No one would have expected those top two would have taken ties. You would have assumed that they wouldn't have done. And it would have been a case of it would have been quite a simple. Ross McGregor, Jack McIntyre and Luca Burke in any order is your top three. But somehow, yeah, Dendy's going to be sat there in that in the cockpit of that Zancho, Zancho Sims 28 machine. It's going to be absolutely screwing in that cockpit at the moment because he's going to be so frustrated about the amount of times he's been held up by people. Of course, he sat behind Tom Ryer for the best part of six or seven laps, which here at Spa is an enormous amount of time. Knowing, of course, well, assuming potentially that Tom has actually changed his tyres. We are under the assumption that he hasn't, as we know that well, we are confident that Ross McGregor and Ben Hicks haven't either. And as a result, those top three are the ones that haven't changed tyres. Look like they're going to be... Uh, going to be getting a couple of uh, podium positions between them and it's it's not what anyone expected at all 
strategy dice being rolled all the time here at the Esports Design Game for Super Cup. And we love to see it because this is going to be a battle for the final step on the podium because Ben Hitz, the driver of the number six Halp Racing Cayman, he's opted not to take tyres. And that's seen him leapfrog up the order into second place, which would be a maiden appearance on the podium. Ross McGregor then leading the way, a margin... Well, we'll see what happens actually as they come through the uh, start finish straight and the timing screens reset, if you like, following that final round of pit stops. These uh, gaggle of drivers, well, McGregor, sorry, McIntyre and Burke really going longer than anyone else, and Burke getting all kinds of sideways through the middle part of the bus stop. That's going to allow McIntyre to pull up alongside as they go up towards La Source. Burke on the inside, surely with the higher ground against his competition in the number 37 he holds the inside and will be trying to do his best to park it on the exit and stop a cutback but McIntyre's got the run out of the first corner and on the run down the hill they're going to be side by side just about Burke squeezing the door into the pit walls they come through a rouge Burke holds on to the position he doesn't want to let this one slip but McIntyre in the slipstream up over the hill at Radion really closing up as they drag up the Kemmel straight McIntyre is going to be looking for the move. Burke goes to the inside. McIntyre on the outside. They're side by side on the run up the hill. Can McIntyre get the job done around the outside? It's going to be last of the late breakers. Burke manages to hold the inside line and manages to hold on to fourth position for the time being. But he's got two Zanjo Simsport cars behind. One of Jack McIntyre who'll be looking to make amends for the races so far this season. And Will Dendy, he'll be looking to make amends for the strategy call that has not gone his way tonight. Oh, absolutely. I mean, considering we saw what we can only assume was a little bit of team orders going through Brussels right at the start of this race, that was not necessarily made easy by Luca Burt there, was it? Goodness me, squeezing Jack McIntyre into the wall, coming through source. Jack McIntyre almost shoving Luca Burke up the hill onto the Kemmel straight, and it looked like move was done. But yeah, Luca Burt late on the brakes, as late as you like, and this is all benefiting Tom Ryer. He's going to be looking back behind him in his, in his virtual mirror thinking, right, yeah, you guys keep doing what you're doing. I'll make a little bit of a gap. I'll make sure that my uh, my dirty old tyres will, will last the rest of this race. And potentially, if he's lucky, he might be thinking, well, I've got a potential chance of getting a scalp on Ben Hitz as well, because with all due, with all due respect to Ben Hitz, I think that Tom Ryer is a little bit quicker than that man at the moment and uh, has been throughout the, set, throughout the evening, so he's going to be potentially considering it. However, interesting to note those tyres really coming into Luca Burke and Jack McIntyre's favour because look at how much time they've gained on Ryan through there they were a little bit more than a second back in the middle of the sector but through the corners through the middle part of the track they've really gained some time and Tom's under a bit of pressure heading into the final half an hour of this race at Spa Frankenshop Jack McIntyre who we're riding on board with at the moment, closing up to Luca Burke and Tom Ryer in the number two MSL Motorsports car who took pole position in his debut appearance in the series. It was rather usurped from the front uh, positions by Luca Burke and indeed was bullied rather by the Zancho Simsport drivers. And I'm looking, David, at lap times. I'm looking at the pace they've got on track at the moment. And it looks like Burke is the fastest man out there but credit to Ross McGregor and Ben Hitz and Tom Wright, you know, they're lapping consistently and they're, they're matching these, their competition who are on fresh rubber. They could, they could hold this all the way to the end. The pace deficit is not enough to see those who've taken new tyres claw back that time lost in pit lane. Absolutely, Tim. It's really just a case of, well, I mean, it's, it's the question everyone's asking and I'm going to pose it to you now. Who is going to win this race? Because I'm not even 100% certain whether, top, whether Ross McGregor's got this win in the bag, you know. Because you can see the amount of pace that Luke Burke and Jack McIntyre got. They're practically pushing. He's got to get past Ryder, isn't yeah. he? He's got to get past. He's got to get past him as soon as possible. You see, is he going to make the move into Brussels? He's not. He's got a chance through speed. Potentially if he gets a good run, that's a bit of understeer from Tom. Oh, Luke has just got to jump on the anchors a little bit just to avoid... A little bit of a nudge there as they come into speakers or known or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter in the corner names at the moment. Let's be honest, we've got to focus on what's going on on track. And Luca's got a good run out of there coming down the hill towards Puan. It's going to shift to the inside into the double left hander again. Not really an overtaking spot. It just sits behind him. Lovely camera we've got from the from the roof of this of this 87 rocket since what came he's got a fantastic run as they come up to his pack right going wide it's two by two hurrah as they go through there jack mcintyre opportunist move as you like and tom ryan's gone 
going to fifth in the space of, well, it wasn't even a corner tip, it was a very short straight. It's unbelievable stuff. Space of 50 metres or less, he lost a couple of positions, unfortunately. That was how things played out in the opening stint, the opening 10 minutes of this race for Tom Ryer, but he's still in fifth place. He's got Will Dendy behind him, and Dendy's going to be sick of the back of that Rothmans inspired MSL Motorsports livery by the time this race is over. But now, crucially for Burke and for McIntyre, they've got to make this fresh rubber work. They've got to kick on. There's no time to battle. 26 minutes remaining, and they've got a gap of about seven and a half seconds to Ben Hitt, who's in second place. And then beyond that, there's another eight seconds to race leader Ross McGregor. So they need to overturn a deficit of 15 seconds in the remaining 25 minutes. And my maths isn't amazing, David, but they've got to do it at a rate of about a second and a bit a lap. Two seconds a lap will see them catch up right towards the end. And on that previous tour, David, they were Luca Burke's time, 2 minute 29.8 compared to McGregor's, 2 minute 31.3. They are absolutely flying and definitely going all guns blazing in an attempt to take the race lead and the victory tonight. Absolutely, you took the words out of my mouth. I was just about to pay attention to those timings. So yeah, unbelievable stuff. Let's say two seconds left is going to do it. Jack Norrie and John Clements though coming down towards a roof side by side. These two have been hammer and tongs that a lot of this race and Jack, Jack, Jack Noller, aggressive as you like, cutting the curb with the inside of Eau that's absolutely fine track limits wise so he's going to have no issues there but John Clemson's going to have a bit of slip stream down the Kemmel straight, it goes to the outside early it's one of those moves, it's one of these corners where you come up to Lake Conf, you've got the right hander, then the left hander, so he's got the chance to make that outside line into the inside very, very early but Jack Noller breaks a little bit later, covers that inside line, looks for the switch back as John doesn't manage to get it, Jack just holding on at the moment as they come into Malmody and Jack is still somehow in front but John is all over the back of this JPS livery MSL Motorsports car the number 36 machine against the number 88 as they go into Bruxelles very very close again John just giving Jack a little bit of a nudge as they go through these quarters so close going practically pushing him back down the hill you can see in your picture in picture you've got uh, Jack McIntyre and Luca Burke who are on a mission now effectively going to be hot lapping but Tom Ryer has not been left behind them as they go through Piff Path John Clements looking to the inside of Pillow doesn't elect to go for the move but got so much more speed coming out of these corners it's only a matter of time before 8th and 9th to switch inside so it's going to be really interesting to see Tim how much time John Clements can catch. Of course, he's got his teammate Bastian Zenefels up about eight seconds up the road. If your maths is good, my maths is no better. And I would imagine that's even more than two seconds a lap if they're going to make that done by the end of this race. Let's see then. Can they close that gap? It looks like it's coming down already. Burke now under five seconds behind Ben Hit. So he's closed the gap at a rate of, well, the best part of two, three seconds on this previous lap or so. So the gaps to the podium spots and the leading duo are tumbling down with 23 and a half minutes to go. McGregor and Hitz doing their best to stick it out on old rubber whilst Burke and McIntyre with their tools sharpened and their rubber fresh are going absolutely hammer and tongs at the moment pushing on. In fact, that was a purple lap time from Luca Burke, fastest of the race so far purple in the first two sectors convincingly a two minute 28.9 from our reigning champion is the fastest lap of the event so far he is giving it absolutely everything because the victory is still on the cars if everything goes his way and potentially if McGregor succumbs to the pressure the top uh, cars the top six really were almost all within camera shot there in the picture in picture the run through Le Cobb uh, and the end of the opening sector of this spa Francochamp circuit. It's been an absolute sizzler so far. We've still got 22 and a half minutes to go. So stay tuned, stay locked in, go anywhere, because this eSport Designs Cayman Super Cup event at spa Francochamp is very much undecided. And a battle that is undecided is this competition between Jack Noller and John Clements, the MSL Motorsports car, doing his best to hold off the podium sim racing machine in the battle for 8th and 9th. Nola as well taking new tyres in comparison to Clements who was involved in that instant in uh, the opening few laps uh, with Tom Riot. Both of them taking tyres, so both of them have got fresh rubber. It's just that Clements are five laps fresher in comparison to Nola. So let's see how that plays out over the remaining 21 
and change minute so it's really all bubbling up into an absolute stormer here david and the tires on acc you know they can go the distance if you're nice to them you've got to be fair to the rubber because you can take it a long way but battle it bruise it beat it up in your opening few laps it's going to come back to bite you towards the end of the stick yeah absolutely and pressures are a key part of that as well if you run your tires too hot you're going to chew them up and you're going to be really struggling it doesn't look like we've had any of that so far which is good of course it's a little bit a little bit cooler in the evening now we've just coming past quarter past nine in the evening in game time so it's like the sun very much coming down i don't think we'll see nightfall but lights definitely on all these cars you can see lights very much on for John Clements in the 88 PSR machine, just behind Jack Noller in the 36 MSL Motorsport car. Good showing from Jack. I did actually have a chat with him earlier on today. He is not, he's not very well practiced at Spa this week. He's been planning for exams, bless him. I remember those days very well, and I'm glad I don't have to do them anymore. So I hope they go well for him, but he's got a little bit of something to work on. At the moment, he's got to work on trying and keep them. And over the last few laps, he's certainly done a good job of that. But looking at the gap at the top, Tim, that gap from between Ross Bergerko and Ben Hitt seems to be stagnating at just, uh, just over nine seconds. But Luca Burke a second and a half behind the Haupt racing machine at the moment. That is surely second place on the card at any point in the next lap or two. 2.2 seconds faster on that previous tour of the Spa Francorchamps circuit. Luca Burke is absolutely flying, but he's bringing Jack McIntyre with him. The gap between the reigning champion and the Zanjo Simsport number 37.3 of a second. So there's two cars who are rattling their way up the order. They've dispatched Tom Ryer with conviction now. Four seconds, the gap to our pole sitter this evening. As the sun sets on Spa, the battle is far from over. There we go. That is the battle for the podium. Hits in the orange Haupt racing machine, doing his best. He's not looking the mirrors at this point because steaming up behind him is Luca Burke and Jack McIntyre. Burke in the... The white and yellow Rocket Esports machine, McIntyre in the deep blue and silver of the Zancho Sim Sports squad. And these cars are closing right up now on second place. McGregor is going to be hoping that hits can cause them a headache for enough time to see McGregor's lead held intact because I'm convinced that McGregor will get, uh, the Burke, sorry, will get past hits quickly. He needs to dispatch the number six make use of this fresh rubber and get the job done he's almost too close to the run through Paul Freire curve he needs to pull out and he does so Burke's going to try and go around the outside at Blanchemont to take second place I wouldn't put it past him he's going before he even gets to the corner I think hits there just opting to back out but he's parked on the apex as the number six that's going to cause McIntyre a headache on the run up towards the bus stop but the number 37 gets the move done quickly and McGregor is going to be cursing looking at the timing screens. He's probably hoping that hits would hold them up. But now Burke and McIntyre released. And the gap as they cross the line is 10.1 seconds. Can they do it? They were a second faster on that previous lap. 18 minutes to go. It's going to be very close indeed, David. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Ben Hitz has been well and truly mugged off, hasn't he? He's, he's been very... He looked like he was on chance for a podium. And then Luca Burke and Jack McIntyre appear at alien pace. I mean, it's crazy the lap times they're doing at the moment. Of course, yeah, you have to take into account, of course, the fresh rubber compared to Ben, obviously, not making the tyre change. But the rate of knots they've caught up with him is absolutely incredible. And that move from Luca was ballsy as you like. Round the outside of Stav uh, round the outside of Blanchemont. Yes, please. In fact, I don't even need to wait that long. I'll get it done before the corner. And uh, yeah, I think you're probably right. Ben was probably just being a little bit more careful there and just trying not to make any, any incidents too badly. Now it's just a case of him having to try and hold on from uh, behind. Of course, he's got a four-second gap back to the MSL Motorsport number two machine. But we do know, we saw through qualifying, we've seen this evening how quick that man is. So it's still not entirely confirmed that Ben Hitz is going to get that fourth place. We can currently see Aaron Martin Pilkington, of course, fantastic racing room. He's been in the wars in every single race so far in the eSport designs that came the Super Cup so far. And uh, he's having a fantastic showing tonight this evening. He's up into 13th place, starting well down the grid. And of course, like you said, Tim, getting caught up in incidents in the start of the race. But he's got David Bellinger close for company right behind him. Again, just giving him a little bit of a push up the hill through Eau Rouge, it seems, as they go on to the Kemmel Strait. They've got Jack Smith in this SGP Esports number 14 machine a little bit up the road as well. So those two will be focusing on maybe trying to get some more from the board as well. Jack Noller, I'm seeing from the time and time, has actually had 
a little bit of an issue by the looks of it. Dropped down a couple of positions back to 10th. So he's lost time to John Clements and Chris Crossman for full effect. So, I mean, I don't know about you, Tim, but I've got absolutely no idea as to how any of these top 15 positions who are going to get points are actually going to finish off in the next 16 minutes. We'll throw all the names up into the air and catch them as they fall back down. How about that, David? That might be the best way to sort this because at the moment it looks like it's going to be all changed before the chequered flag. McGregor's lead is tumbling down 9.7 seconds now back to Burke, who is challenged by McIntyre. McIntyre did look for a move in towards Fania of the Piff Path during this particular lap. So McIntyre's although he's behind and although it's probably beneficial to just stay behind the Rocket Sim Sport car did it like he wanted to make the move four tenths separating them they're taking another two tenths out of McGregor in that final sector which isn't particularly tyre dependent it's a lot more straight line speed and can you keep it clean and, and safe through that final sector uh, which constitutes the run through Stavlo or the Paul Frere curve through Blanchimont and the bus stop to the start finish line on the Grand Prix straight. That gap is coming down though. McGregor's managing to extract as much pace as he can from the tyres on that number 33. Zanjo Simsport came in a 2 minute 30 last time around compared to Burke's 2 minute 30.0. So a difference of six tenths between the two of them. McIntyre at 29.955 so barely any difference between the 87 and 37 currently in second and third tom ryer uh sorry ben hits in fourth then tom ryer in fifth and will dendy in sixth rather looks like that's going to be the best he can manage he's been unable to get past the number two msl mode sports car for the entirety of this race or the second half of this race it seems post pit stop he had the pace early on, led the race up until making his visit to pit lane with an hour to go. But taking tyres, saw him emerge behind that number two Rodman's inspired livery, uh, Cayman, and he just hasn't been able to make the move. McIntyre, clearly quick in this middle sector though, able to get the run on Burke on the on the run down the hill through Pujon and into the pit path from Fania. Unable to get the pass though. Opting just to drop in behind through campus and the Paul Frere curve. As picture in picture, you can see our race leader, Moss, Ross McGregor. Nine seconds now, the gap. They're eating away at it, David. 14 minutes to go, probably about five or six laps. They're going to need a second, if not more than that, per lap. They want to reel in the number 33. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, if we can, if we've seen it happen once, and we know people who can do it, Luca Burke and Jack McIntyre clearly proven themselves to be two that can do it. All they've got to do is just stay out of each other's way, and it looks like they're doing that at the moment. They're just almost working together to an extent. They're doing a good job of not having, not really getting in each other's way. And you can see now, less than the Formula One pit uh, start finish straight separates the first and the second and third drivers at this moment in time. It's eight point nine eight eight seconds back to. Ross, uh, back to Luca Burke from Ross Ring. got Jack McIntyre a little bit close behind him there. Almost a bit too close, not something you want to be doing. But they were seven tenths of a second and nine tenths of a second quicker, respectively, were Burke and McIntyre on that last lap. So, like you say, Tim, not necessarily enough to close that gap. But if, like I say, there's anyone who can do it, I think these two have got a pretty good job of job on their hands and they've definitely got the chance. So, don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. If we don't know who's going to be winning this one just yet far from settled as we head into the final 12 minutes and change. McIntyre very close to the back of Burke on the run up towards Le Com. We would have been able to see the Zancho Simsport number 33 of Ross McGregor leading the way. It will be able to see him at certain points on the track when the straights open up. They'll be keeping their tabs on how that gap is changing. It's now down below nine seconds. McGregor a 31-0 on that previous lap, Burke a 30.4 and McIntyre a 30.2. So it looks like McIntyre actually could have the pace on Burke, whether that's just a symptom of the slipstream that he's benefiting from around this seven kilometre spa Francorchamps circuit. It's likely, but there is pace in these two. They've definitely pulled the gap on hits and Raya in fourth and fifth and Dendy in sixth still unable to get past that number two machine 
Then it's Bastian Zenefels in seventh, which would be his best result for a while in the number 64 podium sim racing car ahead of John Clements, uh, his teammate in eighth in the number 88. So it's all late for John Clements. Then Jack Nuller in ninth with Chris Crossman for company in the battle for that position in ninth and tenth. Then Vidargo uh, is in 11th. We're just seeing a change there as David Belanger has decided he's going to put the pedal to the metal in the final uh, part of this race. He's just made a, a pass for 12th place, the number triple two EGT most sports machine getting past the SGP Esports number 14 of Smith. So that's the position gained for Belanger. Behind is Aaron Martin Pilkington set to match his best performance of the season in 14th place and in 15th and rounding out the points paying positions is Thomas Lavoie in the number 20 EGT motorsports car so uh, potentially double points finish for the Canadian squad which I'm sure they'll be very happy with but as we know they would like to be fighting up towards the sharp end and speaking of sharp end but once again closing the gap but David, I'm not sure whether it's going to be enough because McGregor looks like he's just holding on with pace. Could come right down to the wire in the final lap. Yeah, absolutely, Tim. What you're talking about, maybe four laps left. On top, obviously, all entirely depends on uh, on when Ross McGregor or where Ross McGregor is on track, assuming he's, of course, in the lead at that point. It still remains to be seen, but it <laughs> entirely depends on where he is on track when the timer hits zero, of course. We'll run to the end of the lap when the time hit zero so if he's literally just crossed the start finish line we get another lap which would be interesting to see so yeah it, it's very very close to call it's going to be very difficult to tell i think they're not necessarily looking like they're closing up at the moment and the good thing for uh, for ross is he has got a lovely patch of clean air in front of him the closest man on track is the number 83 machine which is uh stefan bunatix and he's at least a couple of corners ahead of him on the circuit so he's got plenty of space in front of him all ross has really got to do is just nurse those tires hold on to it a little bit and uh, and and keep going as he is but at the moment we'll turn back to a little bit of a battle towards the bucket back end of the top 10. jack noll has managed to make his way back past chris crossman to go into Brussels, but chris not been dis not been uh, detached from the back of that msl motorsport machine john clements making a little bit of a gap you just see him in your picture just disappearing through down towards Puan, he's got a little bit of a gap in front of him, a little bit of breathing space, nowhere near enough time for him to catch his NFLs in front of him. But Chris Crossman in the BD Motorsports car following the number 36 machine at the moment. But like I say, considering Jack's not had a huge amount of practice, to be ninth in a field of this quality and really continuing that consistent run of scoring points as he has done since he joined the series at Kyle Army in season one last, last time out, he's done a fantastic job. And uh, really been showing over the last couple of weeks to him, hasn't he, that his defensive work is really quite something. We saw him at Mizano in, in Catalonia, indeed, in that battle with Regan Mitchell for the podium in the first race. He's able to make this came in kind of two, three times uh, as wide as it normally is. I wonder if he's got some sort of uh, hack engaged where the car, <laughs> the car's hitbox is twice as wide as it actually is. Uh, but no, impressive to see Nola once again putting on a spectacular defensive display, like you say doesn't feel like he's had the most time to practice and get up to speed and he joked after Barcelona that he did the whole strategy on the fly so I wouldn't be surprised that Jack has, has been crunching some numbers whilst attempting to hurtle this uh, JPS inspired Cayman around the uh, spa Francorchamps circuit so battle for ninth and 10th is still on battle for the lead is still heating up because Burke has closed the gap now down to 6.5 seconds as they cross through the first sector timing beam. That gap could have come down even more so. Yes, down to 6.3. So he's closing it. He's taking little bites out of it at a time. It's really crucial now that Burke gets the pedal down. He's managed to drop McIntyre, actually. So the gap between them, which has been a matter of tenths over the last 20, 25 minutes or so, is now up to 1.5 seconds. So I wonder if McIntyre just can't keep up and has made a mistake somewhere. But Burke needs to start taking some bigger lumps out of that lead because McGregor is heading towards an impressive victory at the moment. 6.3 seconds to go. Seven minutes, David. Oh, God, trying to do the maths again. It's not quite adding up. I don't know if Burke's got it in him to catch up. 
I think the only way it's going to happen, Tim, now at, at the moment, and I don't want you to switch off, of course, because there's still plenty to fight for. Of course, we've got plenty of people all over the track fighting. You can see you've got Will Dendy closing back up on Tom Ryer again, the back of the car. He's going to be very much fed up off by the end of this race. But, yeah, you would only assume now that Ross McGregor, if he keeps it clean, he will hold on to that race win. But he was one and a half seconds slower than Luca Burke on the last lap. And that is Ross McGregor doing very similar times to what he does before. Gap now 5.6 seconds as they hit the time of being for the th going into the final sector. So this, I keep I keep telling myself it's it's dead and buried and Ross McGregor's going to take the win. But then I see Luca Burke pulls out another brilliant lap time and closes the gap even more. So with what, with you'd say three laps to go, it's anyone's game, it really is. I reckon McGregor's got all available uh, you know, relatives or HUD uh, on his screen turned off. He doesn't want to see that time coming down. He doesn't want to see Burke closing up. The virtual mirror is probably turned off as well because the white and day glow yellow uh, Rocket Simsport number 87 Cayman is closing up to the race leader. McIntyre attempting to hold on to the back of the reigning champion. 1.7 seconds now the gap between the drivers currently in second and third. Ben Hitz is still holding on to fourth place in the number six out racing car ahead of Tom Ryer in that number two MSL motorsport machine. He's managing to hold on to a top five uh, result on his debut appearance in the series. He's got Will Dendy for company though, as he has done for seemingly the entirety of this race. Aaron Martin Bilton going side by side though with Jack Smith on the run through Blanchemont. Wow, that's a brave one from Jack to try and go around the outside there. And Aaron's just going to close the door on the exit and force him to back out of that one. Very close between those two fighting for 13th and 14th. But I'm sure they're aware, David, that with a, a slightly short season, you know, seven races, every point is going to count when we get to the final round at Silverstone. Yeah, absolutely, Tim. And of course, if we cast our mind back, if we look to Ross McGregor, of course, winning at the moment he's had two fourth places but as it stands currently leading the championship ahead of kev critchley and obviously kev's not in the race this evening unfortunately so ross is going to be extending his lead luca burke imagine my maths is terrible as we've mentioned too many times this evening you can only imagine luca burke's going to bring himself up into second in there and then you'd imagine jack mcintyre is going to go up into third as a result and jack Noller not too far behind so yeah one of those consistencies really key, but getting a couple of wins under your belt is always nice as well. And Ross McGregor's going to be very pleased himself. But Aaron Martin Pilkington under a bit of pressure from Jack Smith this time. That fast forward title at the moment under a bit of jeopardy, losing a position back to, Aaron, to, to Jack Smith rather. They go into Lacombe. Jack going a little bit wide onto that first apex. Gives Aaron the chance to get back on the end of him. We've got Thomas Lavoie in the EGT motorsport car just behind ringside seats for this as they go into Bruxelles. Aaron's going to go down the inside. He's going to be late on the anchors. A little bit of contact there, just a little bit of understeer maybe from Aaron. He's got a little bit too hot and heavy into the hairpin, but he's managed to make the move stick, gets himself a little bit of a gap. But this is becoming a triplet very, very quickly indeed. So let's see how this plays out. It's Jack Smith flashing the lights. He's not happy with the defensive work from the driver of the number 626, Aaron Martin Pilkington. We've seen because there should be less penalties actually from from this race as we have done from the, the previous couple of races. So some clean and, and fair driving, supposedly, or I'm just hearing that actually the stewards, uh, well, they might have decided to abandon ship and just leave out due to that discord issue mid race. So it's been difficult for them to conduct the, uh, the stewarding of the event so far. But let's see if everyone can keep it clean and fair. But flashing the lights, traffic in front, that looks like... Stefan Bunatic. Ste yeah, Stefan Bunatic's the number 83. Burke cannot dare to lose a second because that next car in front is the race leader. The gap now down to 3.3 seconds. It was going to be with a lap to go, David. It's all going to come down to that white flag lap. Goodness me. Yeah, clawed out another 1.7 seconds. Did Luca Burke off Ross McGregor on the last lap? 2.29.5 versus a 2.31.2. So realistically, what it was is before, if, if Luca Burke and Jack, and to be fair, let's not discount Jack McIntyre because he's still not too far off as well, although maybe a little bit too far 
for the second place if Luca Burt manages to, of course, usurp first place off of Ross McGregor. I'm kind of hoping he doesn't, if I'm honest, just to add a little bit more jeopardy into the season. It'd be nice to see Ross get a win because he thoroughly deserves it after the race he's had. He's kept himself up at the top end, gone for a bold strategy of not changing tyres versus these two, and it's, it's paying off at the moment. But you have to wonder... I mean, I was looking back to four or five laps ago, Luca and Jack were running 230s at one point fairly low in those, and they've really only started to dip into the 229s over the last few laps. Is it going to be a case of, as you mentioned a couple of times, Tim, a little bit too little, too late for these guys to see Luca going a little bit wide? They're going to be careful of track limits. That is one of those areas you can get a can get a warning through there. He's got 2.4 seconds is the gap now as they're coming on to what will definitely be the final lap. Ben hits under a bit of pressure from Tom Ryan. So Tom trying to redeem himself a little bit from a couple of incidents towards the start of this race. Of course, first one's not really anything he could do, but the one with himself and John Clements a little bit clumsy. He will, I'm sure he'll admit, but chance to get past the Haupt Racing Team car. But I tell you what, Tim, I've been thoroughly impressed with the way that Ben's command of this race has done a fantastic job and on some very very tired rubber doing a fantastic job at the moment at least of holding Tom behind props to McGregor and to Hitz who have managed to take their tyres a whopping 35 laps of the Spa Francorchamps circuit that's nearly a Grand Prix distance uh, 44 laps is run during the Belgian Grand Prix and they're only 10 laps off that so here we are starting what we believe will be the final lap McGregor has a two second advantage over reigning champion Luca Burke who's not able to close up through that opening sector and run through a rouge enough to be challenging through the middle sector let's see if he can make better use of that fresh rubber that 13 laps old compared to the 35 laps that McGregor's done on his tyres so definitely going to have some sort of advantage in there as we see Briar flashing the lights at the back of Ben Hitz to try and get the move done for fourth place which would be a very impressive maiden and uh well, maiden performance from Tom Rye we know he's so quick in the Caymans and definitely a statement of intent for what he could do in the championship looking in the picture in picture though as we see McGregor and Burke down the hill through Speaker's Corner and on the run through towards Puon Burke's closing he is closing that gap but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough it could all come down to the bus stop on this final lap of a, a 90 minute event it's really going to come down to the final few talk corners McGregor needs to keep it clean one mistake could see a well-deserved race victory slip from his grasp. He's almost got one hand on the trophy. He's wishing that this spa circuit was a couple of kilometres shorter as they run through Stavolo and into the Paul Frere curve. But down, the gap's down to six tenths. You can see it on screen. It's massively reduced through the middle sector. He's going to be within a distant slipstream range and closing up through Blanchemont on fresher tyres. It's coming down to the wire into Blanchemont for the final time. McGregor needs to be clean. He needs to be on his marks. It's a little bit far away from the apex as he would prefer. He's going to have to drop the brakes as late as he dare. Burke is so close to the back of the number 33 on the run through the bus stop. He closes up, there's bumper to bumper. McGregor parks it on the apex, does everything he needs to, and he's going to cross the line to take a spectacular victory in round three of the eSport Designs Cayman Super Cup in association with MSL Motorsport. So it's all kicked off in the battle for fifth. That's hits off in the runoff. That's going to allow Raya through fourth place. And indeed, Will Dendy still doesn't benefit from all that change at the end. McGregor takes victory from Burke and McIntyre. Ryer in fourth, hits in fifth. Will Dendy in sixth ahead of Bastian Zenefels, a return to the top ten of his seventh place ahead of podium sim racing teammate John Clements in eighth. Then it's going to be Jack Noller, we believe, just holding on to ninth place ahead of Chris Crossman in the BD Racing number three. Then Kieran Vidargo yet to cross the line in 11th place with David Belanger. Aaron Martin Pilkington in 13th with Jack Smith and Tamar Lavoie rounding out your top 15. David, that's exactly what these pit stop races have to offer to the Esport Designs Cayman Super Cup. That one came all the way down to the final apex of the final quarter on the final lap.
Oh, absolutely, Tim. Make sure you pin that one for the show reel. That was a fantastic calling of that final lap or so. Unbelievable stuff, wasn't it? And it was one more lap and Luca Burke would have won that race. Uh, there's no question about it. He was so much quicker on those fresh tyres, but Ross did such a fantastic job. Kept it on the on the black stuff when it mattered. Of course, Jack McIntyre dropping back a little bit would have been would probably feel a little bit disappointed himself for not managing to hold to the back. But that pace from Luca Burke was absolutely incredible. He was so so quick towards the back end of that race, pumping in 20, 229, 229, 229, and and clawed that gap back. It looked like it was an iron impossible task, and it almost almost pulled off and uh, again credit to Tom Ryer of course getting caught up in a couple of incidents I think you'll probably feel slightly hard done by after the first couple of corners of course that dare I say slightly aggressive move from Will Dendy going into Lacon but he did a fantastic job of recovering from it keeping on those on that warm rubber and doing a fantastic job of managing to get himself back up into fourth as well just a shame that Ben Hitz managed to uh, to drop it on the final corner but he just about managed to get fifth place ahead of Will Dendy who just felt like none of, none of his ducks lined up this evening he had a fantastic start to the race didn't he and then uh, yeah just got stuck behind Tom for just far too long and uh, even at the end still couldn't get past him and couldn't get past Ben Hitz as well so probably one to forget for him but 90 minutes of pure brilliance from everyone fantastic race we see plenty of messages in the chat saying it's been a nice clean race it has been absolutely that of course like we say Stuart unfortunately had to drop out because we had some issues halfway through but Nonetheless, I can't foresee too many incidents being reported on that one because that was just pure, brilliant racing and uh, fantastic race craft from everyone out there this evening. Brilliant race. Well, sit back. Everyone take a deep breath, take a drink, take a sip, crack open a window, let some fresh air in. I'm sure we're all a bit exhausted after that one. We're just waiting for our drivers to head into the green room to chat to them post-race. But the thrilling event that came right down to the wide there at Spa from Cachon. There's still a couple of drivers taking uh, their in laps and returning to pit lane. One, two, three on track. McGregor, Burke, McIntyre, as David said, likely to become one, two, three in the championship. Mm-hmm. McGregor, who's finished fourth in the opening two rounds, now makes the leap onto the podium and onto that middle and top step to take victory here at Spa, making his tyres last the entirety of the 90-minute event. But really, David, that drama that we're just seeing on stream there, that incident with Bunkham and the Halp Racing car of Danny Greaser, that really just split up that battle in the midfield. But over 90 minutes, it all came crashing back together with those pit stops. Oh, God, yeah. Would you have expected to be about a, a battle into the final quarter on the final lap? Unbelievable stuff, wasn't it? And it, it's just, I mean, the quality of the guys in that top sort of seven or eight, yes. Obviously, like you say, after the pit stops of people doing doing uh, converted strategies, obviously some people putting fresh rubber on, some people not. It did kind of change around a little bit at the top end. But that first sort of 40 minutes or so of those guys pretty much just hot lapping and just sticking so close to each other in the top seven was just absolutely incredible. And and some of the moves that went on, as you see, see uh, Clotier making the move on Bauer in the highlight screen at the moment there. Bauer, uh, eSport design car looking a little bit battered and bruised at that point. But... The, the quality that they put on show this evening was just was just second to none. And I think you're going to have to do a little bit of running down to the interview booth, Tim, because I believe we've got a handful of the guys. I've got at least the top three sitting in the interview booth, ready to have a chat with your fine self. So I'll uh, I'll hand over to you and you can ask those hard hitting questions we know you love to do. Thank you, David. I'm down in the interview room with our top three finishes. What I'm going to say is the most exciting racing we've had in the eSport Designs Cayman Super Cup. Race winner Ross McGregor, second place Luca Burke and Jack McIntyre in third join myself here in the interview room. And I'm going to go to our race winner first. Ross, oh, you had to take the, the risk on not taking tyres in the pit stop. You managed to hold on to a 30 second lead, but just enough to take that win. Oh boy, I'm an old man. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> this is too much. Um, yeah, it's... oh geez. Um, pace was really good in the race. Um, I knew Luca and Jack were on like 70 litres, and I was on 63. Um, and for some reason, I really, I was just really quick today. Um, I don't know why. I don't know where this came from. Um, but obviously, once we got over the kind of incidents at the start, 
Uh, I was down fifth or sixth, um, and there was an incident in front of me at La Source, so I managed to kind of get through that. Unfortunately, I hit the back of, um, sorry, I forget his name, uh, <laughs> yeah, Clements, sorry. Um, I couldn't do anything about it, I was just unsighted. Um, so that got me up to fourth, and then managed to have a little more pace than Luca and Jack. And then the lap times were just sort of fine. I did my fastest lap, like, I don't know, like almost two thirds of the way through my first time. So I thought the tyres would hold on. Um, but I was wrong about that. Um, so yeah, went for the pit stop, took the gamble, didn't change tyres, just took fuel. And it was only just enough. Um, Luca was hunting me down at some speed, so... A little bit fortunate to win that, but um, I think the pace early on in the race kind of proved it. Like it was, it was a well-earned victory, I think, this time. Um, but yeah, Luca was just on form again at the end. So one more lap, and I would have been second, maybe even third. Was Jack obviously took, took new tires as well? So yeah, well done to those guys as well. That's a Zancho Rocket One Two Three. So that's that's good stuff. Race victor at Snetterton last season and a return to the top step tonight but you weren't leading the race in that opening stint like you say it was uh, Zancho Simsport teammate Will Dendy who then got stuck behind one of the MSL cars down the order after taking tyres were you aware of that difference between the pit stop times obviously with taking tyres and with opting to uh, you know go without taking fresh rubber really a result of seeing that uh, that that swap for positions further down the order or was not taking tyres your strategy all along? To be honest at the start of the race I was going to change tyres <laughs> and, and halfway through the race I thought the pace was absolutely fine so I thought I'd risk it and not change the tyres. Obviously it was the wrong decision um, and I knew Will was like running low fuel so he kind of scampered away and we kind of let him go a little bit and he just disappeared um, but obviously you you take that risk of coming out and being held up behind someone else, um, which is obviously what happened, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, I, I won't do that strategy again, that's for sure. <laughs> well, we're coming up to the midpoint of the season. Obviously, the next round at Kailami marks the halfway point. How do you feel about the Kailami circuit? And do you think this is a step now? Well, you're leading the championship coming into Spa and you're going to have an extended margin at the top of the points order. Really, are you looking towards the trophy at the end of the season? Um, to be honest, like up against guys like Luca and, and Jack, um, even like so Will and Jensen, Al Bunker was really quick as well, and Critchley, who's not here tonight for whatever reason. Plus, a whole host of other guys are, you know, they're quick enough to be at the front. So it's, you know, I'm at the top, but I feel like I'm I'm keeping P1 sort of warm for someone else. Um, so Kyle Ami, I've, I've never really driven a race there before, so. I'll, I'll need to practice a little bit before then to to kind of maintain this sort of form. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> Congratulations. Anyway, Ross, on the win this evening. Look forward to seeing you next time at Kailami. Thank you. For our second place finisher, Luca Burke. Now, that's not a sentence I've said too many times in this series, Luca. How was your event this evening and how was that battle through the pack in that final stint? Because you really closed up to Ross one more lap, would you have had it? I think so. I like to think so. <laughs> but oh, that was very exciting. Like, absolute fun. I don't remember when was the last time it got this close by, by the line. Um, but yeah, fu funny Ross says that taking tires was the right call because I'm still, like, I'm not sure it was, um, like, was it, was it a better strategy or was it better to just stick with one tire? Like, I'm just trying to think, you know, where to where we could improve, but yeah, it, it seems to work both ways. So, I mean, it worked out for us. I'm happy for him. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's interesting. Like just long enough races for strategy to to really like take effect, and I really enjoy that. Well, compared to the competition, particularly, you know, Ross and indeed uh, Will Dendy, you pitted the latest. You and uh, Jack McIntyre heading to pit lane with with over half an hour to go, around 35 minutes. Was that always the strategy, to go that deep into the race? Or were you really taking it as it comes as the 90 minutes played out? Mm, I, I took a bit extra fuel to yes, just go as long as possible, but to give me some room in case I want to pit early. However, um, yeah, my plan wasn't to take tires, but I just misclicked and well took a new set of tires as well. 
So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's just like I said, it's just fun, fun to see different strategies can work uh, on at this series. Wolf's fastest lap tonight as well. Back yourself a pair of grid finder gloves. I'm sure you're going to need a, a new pair of gloves after uh, gripping the wheel so hard this evening. Obviously, missed out on the first race at Barcelona. Does it feel good to, to bounce back with a with a second consecutive podium and really stamp a claim on, on defending your title? Oh, for sure. I'm I'm really happy to be fighting for the top as much as I am, and hopefully, I can keep this pace up. Brilliant. Well, congratulations on your result this evening, Luca. Thank you. We'll go over to our third place finisher, Jack McIntyre. Jack, after a disappointing race at Mazzardo, it must feel good to get back on the podium. And it was looking like it was all going to come down to the final lap for yourself. Just dropped by Luca, though, in those final few laps. Yeah, much better than last week. I mean, uh, I guess uh, uh, an apology to Kev publicly. I, I sent him one last week for for the lap on incident. That kind of put me out of the, out of the running last week. So better to be, to be up there this week. Um, really didn't enjoy quality. I don't know what happened. I think I had about a second more pace that I just couldn't find. So that was disappointing. But yeah, and then in, in the race, I, I struggled with tyres. Um, so it was, you know, to beat guys like Luca and Ross, you have to, everything has to go right. So hopefully uh, next week I can work a bit more on setup, work a bit more on tyres and maybe one of these weeks it'll all go right and I can take a win. It certainly looked like you had the pace this evening. What was it like in that opening stint? Because there were seven cars, really, bumper to bumper at the start. Do you find yourself having to steer clear of battling, uh, you know, and, and losing time so early on in the race? Or really, is it important to gain positions in that opening stanza? Uh, you kind of have to do both. It's it's really tricky. The stewards here are, are really on top of everything. So it's it's sometimes not worth the risk to go for moves, but then other times you, like in, in the race, my uh, my tyre performance was really, really good at the start. So I think at the start of the race, I, I was feeling really good. And then I, just after the tyre change as well, I felt like I had a lot of pace on Luca, but you know, you have to you have to kind of use the advantage when you can. And I, I don't really think I did too much. I needed to, to get up in the lead and get off the off down the road a little bit. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a balance and it's, it's really hard to find sometimes. Well, after a no score uh, last time out at Mizano, as we say, uh, as a result of that lap one incident, what's your aim now for the rest of the championship? Is it be right up on the podium fighting for race wins or does your mind turn to just scoring points consistently and, and clawing back some some of the margin in the standings? Um, well, it's the only the only goal really can be to win you know that's that's what i'm here for so that's that's what i'll what i'll try and do every week and i mean being consistent is important as well but i think i you know ross has got the lead and i think it's it's his job to be consistent now and to just rack up the points and, and take it home so i think the rest of us have got some catching up to do so that's what i'll try brilliant well congratulations on your result this evening jack and thank you for joining us in the interview room cheers tim thank you We'll go over to the driver who finished just off the podium, but he did take pole position this evening. Tom Ryer for MSL Most Sports. Tom, debut appearance in the series. How was your race tonight? Yeah, well, I mean, considering the fact that I'm new to the series and everything, I mean, I can be quite confident about my pace in the following races as well. I mean, I'm quite happy about the pole position in the end. Quite unfortunate incident with Luca where I just couldn't avoid him anymore and then I just got spun. I mean, but taking into consideration that I was running on full fuel and actually didn't change tires overall in the race. I mean, the pace was superb. So yeah, looking forward to the next races, maybe with a little bit more luck. <laughs> so how did you feel after that pit stop? Because you didn't take tires and you emerged on, on track well down the order. Then competition, the driver who was leading the race, Will Dendy, pitted, came out behind you. Did you think you stood a chance of winning the race after the pit stop window? I mean... <sighs> It's, it's hard to say because I was running four laps with like half, like five seconds of damage. Then I got spun, like I lost at least 15 seconds or so because of everything. Then I unfortunately turned off the engine <laughs> oh, because I wanted to unmute myself in Discord and just press the wrong button. So in the end, like I was missing like 15 seconds. Like, I don't know if that was enough for P1, but for sure, considering that Luca and Ross uh, took the, oh no, was it McIntyre? At least those two take, took new tires and maybe that could have been enough, but yeah, not quite sure. But pace was still good, so a podium would have been the least as today. Well, congratulations on your fourth place anyway, Tom. You've certainly made your mark in your first appearance in the series. Look forward to seeing you racing next time out in Kailami. Yeah, thank you.
We'll go over to the final driver in the interview room with us. It's Florian Bauer from the Esport Designs team. Now, Florian, it wasn't the easiest race last time out of Mazzano. I won't want to shine the light on, on the pit stop uh, issue there. But tonight, another race not really going your way. Let's just explain to us what happened in the, the opening stint. Yeah, very unfortunate race today. Um, yeah, I'm quite disappointed about how it um, in the end ended. And... Um... Yeah, it was like like this. Um, Danny Juzer was in front of me and um, unfortunately got a drive through penalty after Rouge. And yeah, I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna get him on the camel straight. Um, was on a slipstream. Yeah, I don't know quite why, but but yeah, unfortunately he completely um braked in front of me, couldn't avoid it, and just uh, slapped his back and and uh, punted into the left wall. And then yeah, probably the car was mostly done and I yeah, couldn't couldn't do any anything after that well we'll uh, we'll move on from tonight's event and I've got a question actually for Florian and Tom you guys both raced with uh, David Russell in the eight hours of Cheshire uh, the weekend <laughs> just how quick is David we all want to know if he's a bit of a pocket rocket DW I mean he's definitely not slow let's put it that way with a little bit more training because like our practice was <laughs> not that much but considering the amount of practice he had he was for sure quick yeah what Ian say david was a bit faster than me um this weekend didn't practice uh, too much and yeah and had, had a bad incident in in the end of the of the last and um yeah all in all i think david had had good consistency and good pace david had well. potential let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> Well, brilliant stuff. Well, thank you very much, Tom and uh, Florian Bauer, for joining us in the commentary booth. I'm going to go straight back upstairs to David. David, with a little bit more training, you could be very quick. I'm a, li <laughs> I'm a little bit red faced now, Tim. I'm not going to lie to you. That was really nice. That was quite nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, uh, yeah. Just it, Yeah. You know what <laughs> I was to say, really? It was really nice of them. <laughs> Obviously, won't be, uh, won't be appearing on the grid for the Esports Design Super Cup, unfortunately, but I, I tell you what, with the speed that these guys are, I don't think there'd be any point anyway. Um, <laughs> really, yeah, really good to hear from everyone there. Like you say, bit of a shame, because he kind of, well, he kind of got two ends of the spectrum with the, with the interviews there, didn't you? Obviously... <laughs> you stumbled, aren't you, David? Being top, being top, yeah, being top of lost for us. I'm getting very confused now, I don't know what's going <laughs> <laughs> you know what take the win and yeah it's just lots of compliments really nice yeah. um but no uh all joking aside yeah really interesting to see some differences of opinions should we say or differences of feelings after the race like you say obviously ross over the moon clearly like you say he was quite, quite surprised with his pace which is quite interesting and then obviously you go all the way to the other end of the spectrum with florian and i i've actually watched back he uh he did he streamed his own point of view of the race and i managed to catch it on twitter whilst you guys were talking uh and did see what happened it was a bit of a strange one like he pointed out it just seemed that danny geese just came off the power for whatever reason and just couldn't avoid it it was one of those just trying to keep in the slipstream came off so uh yeah contrasting fortunes but uh yeah i mean can't take anything away from all of them it was a fantastic race and up and down the grid some brilliant race craft and uh yeah in my opinion i don't know if you'd agree with me tim but that was probably the race of all of the seasons put together so far an absolute cracker 100 percent i'd agree the best race we've had in the esport designs cayman super cup in association with msl motorsport consultancy and i wouldn't be surprised to see it bettered next time out at kailami yeah we head to the southern hemisphere and kailami in south africa for the fourth round of the esport designs cayman super cup the halfway point of the season ross mcgregor stamping his claim on the championship uh, tonight at Spa, the battle has been turned up to 11 and you certainly won't want to miss it from David Russell and myself, Tim Fulbrook of the commentary team There's some from, from SimSport Solutions and our broadcast director, Steve Bradley. You won't want to miss it. You'll certainly want to be back here, same time, same place next week. And until then, goodbye.